All right, welcome everybody to the 2023 ASA Classic here from St. Bernard's Prep in Coleman, Alabama. We have got a sweltering shoot down ahead of us for the night here because it is hot and it is humid. And Darren Christianberry sitting alongside of me here. Darren, this weather. It's, it's crazy. It's <laughs> been a roller coaster, but I think the one thing we've had consistent is the heat and humidity. Uh, yesterday we had a six hour delay because of the rain. We did get 20 targets in yesterday. We came back out at 730 this morning, got our second 20 target round in. Now there's very few clouds in the sky. It's got to be 90 degrees and we are sweating. So this should be fun. 90 with 105 <laughs> degree real feel. So Darren, the ASA Classic, let's talk about that for a second. That is the last tournament of the ASA season. Mm -hmm. Besides Shooter of the Year, we'll talk about that. It just seems to be one that the archers, you want to have a classic title under your belt. You do, you do. It's like the, I mean, it's the Super Bowl of the year. It really is. This this tournament counts, has to count towards Shooter of the Year. So so there, it, it has a lot of weight. It really has a lot of meaning. The classic championship is a box you want checked on your resume. So right. to come down here and perform, I mean, weather good, weather bad, you know, good day, bad day, you get one chance at the classic every one year. One shot. And this is it. Yeah. So we should mention for shooter of the year, let's run down those for the folks. So we have in known pro, and we'll talk about this more during the show, but in known pro, Kyle Douglas came out of nowhere. He is our known pro shooter of the year. Shooting 36 up today. 36 up today. <laughs> Unbelievable round by him. Of course, at Open Pro, we got Dan McCarthy. He had a little scare in his round, but he did hold on to the end. Of course, the scare was by Levi Morgan, <laughs> who wouldn't be surprised by that. Uh, but Cara Kelly comes back for, uh, I believe this is her eighth shooter of the year wow. title in women's pro. You know, stout shooter there. Cara's always in She's the mix. crazy good. And then in women's known pro, of course, Paige Pierce. I mean, she's gone wire to wire. She won five tournaments. Uh, she's won everything you can win in archery. Just an incredible archer. So no surprise there, I would say. Yeah, no, the, uh, the, the shooter of the year titles, obviously, for the most consistent archer throughout the year. Cumulative points from every tournament. You get one drop. The classic has to count. So this is a tournament that you don't want it to be your bad weekend because it must count towards your shooter of the year score. Must count. So we have, you know, all the usual suspects. You know, Dan and Levi were the closest race. Yep. Uh, Jimmy Lutz was leading senior pro, so there was a little flip-flop there with Kyle yeah. taking over first place. But everybody else had a pretty big lead, so there wasn't well, any real big surprises. There was one big surprise there in senior oh, I guess there was. Randy Morocco. That's correct. Tim Gillingham came in with a 14-point lead. Randy Morocco shot crazy, lights out ended up being the leader going into this afternoon and took over shooter of the year. Yep. This is the first year for that class, senior known pro. So I know he was pretty excited and about I, that. I know in Tim's case, we talk about the classic arrow must count. You know, this, this score does count. Tim shot an arrow, which he thinks has a broken knock on it yesterday, yep. blanked the target, lost 10 points, completely changed his whole weekend. You know, yeah. no shoot off, no shooter of the year title. Uh, you know, 20 plus thousand dollar arrow probably he shot right there. So very disappointing. Every yeah. arrow is important. And it was uh, it was on the first day. It was like the second or third arrow. We were out there and just heard this big crack because his arrow ended up hitting a tree. And yeah, he said he just had a bad knock and it blew up on him. Yeah. So you you never know. Congrats to Randy for coming back yeah. and taking that win. Congrats to Kyle and congrats to everybody because it's no easy task to stay on top or finish on top throughout this whole season. Our last one was in Senior Pro, your division, Jeff Hopkins. Of course, there's another one where he kind of just started with the gas down and never really let up. I shot with Jeff yesterday. It's fun. <laughs> it's fun to watch Jeff. He's just got this... He's, he has no fear. He's got like a different gear at different times. And he, I said yesterday, he hits the stuff that nobody else hits. Like a 48-yard right. javelina, he'll 12 it. Yeah. A 50-yard wolverine, he'll 12 it. Everyone else is trying to 10 it, get away with minimal, minimal damage. And Jeff's like, hmm, just another target. And it's, a, it's fun to watch. It's fun to watch him manage a course. And I'm not surprised at all. He's won five of the – four of the five. Yeah. Trying to win five of the six. One shooter of the year, no surprise whatsoever for me. So, Darren, we have a little bit of a switch in our schedule today. Uh, as folks are looking out on the field there, we see – I see Joe Pitt and 
on the right there is Keith Allstrom. Is Keith Allstrom, mm -hmm. yes. Um, so those are our senior pros, and they're judging. They're going to be up first. So we switched around some of our divisions. If you've been following the broadcast today, what you're going to see is senior pro first, followed by senior known pro second. Mm -hmm. And then once the Sportsman's Channel broadcast comes in, we're going to start off with women's known pro, then known pro, which is typically considered the men's division, women's pro, and we're going to finish with open pro to round out the evening. That sounds like a good show to me. It is going to be a good show. And, you know, Darren, we it, I guess you could say it just took us a while to realize we should put open pro at the end. That's what everybody wants yeah. to see. It, it really, <laughs> you know, it is. And, and – Never sell any of the classes short. No. You know, the talent that's in every class out there, it's a ridiculous amount, and I appreciate good archery. Yeah. The judging game, love it or hate it, it's such a learned skill to stand there and guess how far something is and then shoot that ring that's the size of a 50, 50 cent piece consistently. Dan McCarthy, Levi Morgan are two of the best in the world at it. There's a Crazy. lot of guys that are really good at it, but to be able to watch them utilize the skill level that they've learned over the years man yeah. if you don't appreciate that golly i i do appreciate it so yeah. i really have mad respect for these guys and gals and i enjoy watching good archery so i got a chance to shoot one target with dan mccarthy yesterday and just as you're talking about that ability to to guess the distance and hit that tiny ring it, the target was 39 yards. I shot it for 43. I had a perfect shot. Everything about it was perfect, but I was four yards off, yep. so it was high. Dan came up. He shot it. He hadn't shot it before. He was just over the 12, but he it was getting dark, and he said it looked a little bit longer from the darkness. But that ability to, to do that, and at 40 yards, okay, you know, I miss it by – I miss guess by 40 – or three or four yards – Hunting situation, yeah, I'm still probably going to kill yeah. a deer. Yeah. But trying to hit that 50-cent piece, yeah. I was way off. Yeah, and if you're playing an up or lower game, I mean, if you miss one by four yards shooting at the lower, you, you, you may miss the target. Yeah. You know, so it's not like, okay, I'll misjudge a little and get lucky. No, you have to manage the course, manage those numbers, execute, make good decisions, aim in the right spots. The open pros, the judging classes, hats off to all of them because what Crazy. they do is is amazing, really. And some of that we saw, like with Kyle Douglas in that known pro, where in that division, you basically now, it seems like, you have to hit every 12 ring. Yeah. You have to hit them all, or at least go for them all. And Kyle today missed two, and that's really, that's what he had to do to come back to uh, yesterday after his first round. He was like low on the leaderboard. Mm -hmm. Today, he's there uh, at the top of the class. He did what he had to do, but it, apparently we are ready to get the action started here. So we're going to go to the third member of our team, Nathan Brooks, and he's going to bring out our archers. All right, let's get things started this afternoon. I want to start off with the senior pro division in fifth place from Bremen, Georgia. Shooting for Darton Archery, Mark Kesey. Your fourth place qualifier from Windsor, Virginia. Shooting for Hoyt, Joe Pitt. Your third place qualifier is from Columbia, Virginia. First year shooting in the senior pro division. Shooting for Botech, David Pyle. And your second place qualifier from Waxhaw, North Carolina. Shooting for elite, Keith Alstrom. And he's a stranger to this position, but he's in first place. From Lacona, Iowa, your first place qualifier, Shooting Matthews, Jeff Hopkins. All right, Darren, so there he is, Jeff Hopkins. He's about nine feet tall. 
farm boy from Lacona, right. Iowa, the the just dominates this ball, game, it seems like at times. He's stand, still good enough to compete with the open score. pros. I, I believe and he's and got that gear still. Uh, I said earlier I shot with him yesterday, and it's fun to watch. Jeff has no fear. I, I don't know if it's from years of, years of experience, if it's years of success to where, you know, it doesn't matter if he finishes first or 15th, he doesn't care. Uh, he does one target at a time, and he shoots it like he owns it, and it's fun to watch. <laughs> All right, Darren, so there we see our three-way split screen there. Now, we have not, to, for folks who are tuning in for the first time, just point out some of those bonus rings, the yeah, scoring rings. If you can see a ring like on the on the links, the lowest little circle, that's going to be the low 12. It's in play all the time. You'll see the little stoplight there, the middle ring, the one that Jeff just hit, on that's the left. a 12, yeah. Yep. The middle ring's just going to score as a 10. They can call that upper 12, which is at the 1 o'clock position. They can call that. There's a good look at Mark Kesey. Mark. Yeah, there we go. So the that ring he's next to, he's outside of the 10, close to the 12, but he's going to get eight points for that arrow right there. The larger ring that we saw there is worth eight points. Anything outside all rings is five points. And, of course, that upper Whoa, left ring is a 14. Yeah. So there's a 12 for Jeff Hopkins to get things started. And he's going to need to hit those bonus rings to keep these guys from catching him. Next up for Keith Ostrom, currently... Jeff yeah, we'll show some of that scoring ring there because there was there was a ten line and a core line right side by side that folks may be confused by. It. Twelve for Keith. That's twelve Keith for trail. Keith Allstrom. Keep Keith. In touch with Jeff. No, Keith. Keith shoots. Ten, he shoots all uppers, so that should be a ten. Oh, yeah, there, there he goes. goes. Yep. Oh, Keith yeah. got a ten. Sorry about that. And oh, there we go. The tournament official there said Keith called the upper. What that means, they have an orange cone in their box. They have to set that orange cone out in front of them before they shoot. Yeah. means they're calling to the upper 12, and the lower will no longer be in play. And you mentioned Keith always plays the upper. He always so. shoots at the uppers. This is David Pyle here on the David hyena. David Pyle in his first pro shoot down ever. Good to see yeah. a new face head. out there. He listed as his highlight in 2003. He was the Open A Classic champion. So that's just a few years just ago. Just about 20 years ago, <laughs> my master. I look at this guy. It's like Joe Pitt wants to make Joe, Joe Pitt. Pitt. Here's a 14. That 14. is awesome. How about that? Now he moves him to 420 right out of the gate. And is taken over second place. That's the way to do it, yeah. there, Joe Pitt. Came in in fourth. After one arrow, he's up to second. Up to that's second. how quick this game can change. And for Marquise, we have an eight. Gentlemen, you can move your next Mark target, Mark takes please. an eight. That's going to move him to 413. Jeff just has a two-point lead over Joe right now since Joe hit that 14. So Jeff's going to have to keep the gas down to stay out in front of these guys. And everybody that's in third, fourth, fifth, whatever, they don't have anything to lose. So no. they're going to try to really hammer down and catch Jeff. And we've talked about this for Dar before, Darren, but right, this is Marcus unknown distance, so they have to judge how far these the targets are. The maximum three, distance four, is 50 yards, five. give or take a yard or two. Yeah. So we do know that that's the outer limits yeah. of what they're going to shoot. Anything, Pretty generally, it's going to be 50 or closer. Yeah, half of a football field, if you don't know what 50 yards is, half right, the distance of a we'll full-size football field. Now. And with that, if they misjudge by one or two yards, let's say it's 50 and I say it's 48. Yeah. You drop three inches. I'm missing. Yeah. There's missing a, the bonus ring. There's a good look at the 14 ring shooter right there. He's holding nice and steady. I don't know if he called. He hit the upper 12. I don't. Sure. Oh, yeah, he did shoot. He's on the coyote. That's right. I don't know if he called it or not. That's a center there. You'll see the large circle around Mark's hour yeah. right there. That's the 10. So he's going to get 10 points for that arrow. And there was an oblong ring. That's what we call the core line. That's a removable that's part. Dave, right. That's right. David Pyle shooting at the 14 there. We'll see what he ended up with here in a second. 10 for Mark. That's what they're telling me anyway. 423 now. Next for our leader, Jeff Hopkins. Currently has. Man, look at Jeff. He always shoots at the lowers. <laughs> he knows how yeah. far these things are. He now has 14 four four in addition four. to having a leading score at 434. He's going to have to continue to do that to win. Next up is Keith Allstrom. Currently at 419. <laughs> Jeff, it, it's that hot out It here. is. He's, you can see the sweat on his arm. Jeff's mountain of a man, and he is <laughs> leaking. Some, he's leaking <laughs> some fluid. <laughs> 10 for Keith, so that's going to put him at 429. 
He's now five points behind Jeff since so Jeff hit two twelves right out of the gate. I'm sorry. David Pyle on the Audad, and I don't think he's shooting. That Audad must be pretty close. Yeah. Two for two There's on fourteens if my eyes are correct. Yeah. That is the closest one. Smoked it. Four thirty for him now. Oh. So he overtakes Keith Alstrom as well, depending on what Joe does here. All right. Now we got Joe Pitt. 12 for Joe Pitt. Oh, wow. 12 for Joe Pitt. 4, 32. So Joe six up in two targets. He shot a 14 and a 12. He's plus six. Came in in fourth place. He's now in second. With a two-point cushion. And he's just two points off the lead. Jeff's hit two 12s, and he's only got a two-point lead over fourth place right now. Man, anything can happen in this game. Yeah. If these guys and gals hit rings, it makes it more exciting for everybody, and it's not over until the last arrow shot. Five targets, too. I mean, you can't. Oh boy, you got to be on your A game. Six if everything works out. Six, yes. There will be a sixth arrow at the end for anyone who is within 10 points of our leader. There's a good look at Keith Alstrom. I shot with Keith all day today, and he shot a really solid round. Didn't make very many errors. Just shot his bow well, shot a really nice line, hit a bunch of 12s, and he put himself in a good position to have a chance to win. Yeah, we should mention this is the senior division, which means 50 and up. You can be 49 if you turn 50 that year. So th it's 50 and up. And Keith Alstrom, he only got into the game in his 40s, I think he told me. Yeah, like he's 43 not, years. He's so. not been shooting a lot of years. No. So Keith shot at the 14. David Pyle, I don't know if he called up or I can't see the cone, but we're oh, fixing man. to see some more scores here. There's a good look at Joe Pitt. All right, first shooting that Lynx. For Joe Pitt. Let's see what we got here. Ten, ten, for ten. Joe so we didn't Joe. give anything up. 442 now. 42. Keith going to make a move here if he caught that 14 on the odd end. This is Kesey. Mark Kesey. Just a 10. So 433 ten for Mark. Kesey. He did not call upper. I see he does not have a cone out. That one hit the upper, but. Yeah, and we're in the Next third arrow. Leader, if Mark wants to make a move, he's going to have to shoot at 14s. 10 for Jeff Hopkins. 10 for Jeff. 444. Now, here we come to this all dead. Everybody's <laughs> pouncing on yeah, it. Keith, Keith shot at it as well, and it looks like he's got it. About 4 o'clock on the ring. Those arrow holes leave marks too, so they've got really good references on 14. where to aim right there. Yep. 14 for Key, so 44, 43. Hey, so now he's Scott. only one point behind. Oh, the 14 can <laughs> make such a huge difference. Such a huge difference. All right. Just one more guy? Okay. <laughs> and for David Pyle, currently at 430. David Pyle, did he call that upper? Upper 12 was called. He did, and yes. he got it. Wow, good shooting, fellas. 442. This is a Man. good race. Look at this. Yeah, Hopkins 444, Keith Austin 443, David Powell 442, Joe Pitt 442, and Mark at 433. You'll see the updated score shortly on the TV screen, but by my math, we're two points between fourth and or first and fifth right now. There you go. There's an update. Same order, same order as we came in with, just a bunch of different points up there. All right, keep up. Wow. This time, our leader like Jeff we mentioned, anybody that's within 10 points of the leader, field. after we shoot five targets, will go to the last chance archery, last chance arrow. So it's nowhere near over yet. And nobody's really made David a mistake. Right. No. We'll start your one minute now. So Jeff's going to go. I th well, he's going to probably have to try to 14 that audit since everybody else did. There's Keith. He's holding nice and steady. His stabilizer's barely moving. Looking good. And he, as you mentioned, he always calls upper, so yeah. he got it. And Jeff did not get the 14, so Keith's going to take oh, over the lead right wow. here. That's going to be a four-point swing on first and second. Keith Alstrom has ever won a pro class ASA no, title. No, no, he has not. I don't want to jinx him early. <laughs> I think he just took the lead. That's so good. Ten for David? Well, let's Ten for David, David. Yeah, let's stick 452. with that. 452. 452 there. We'll get to Keith in a minute. <laughs> this is making me sweat. <laughs> Joe, Joe Pitt. Pitt's good follow-through right there. Eight for Joe. 
Joe got an eight. That's not going to help. That's a 450 Marquise, now. You, you don't think it's the 110% humidity that's making you it sweat? It very well could, but this is a pretty good shoot-off. It is. Don't know if we're making it exciting or not, but it is a good shoot-off. 10 for Mark. 443. And right. for Jeff Hopkins. Here we go. So if he shoots an eight, he shot at the Keith 14. Allstrom shoots a 12. Completely four point swing, yeah, and there was only one lead. point Keith, separate. Keith will take a three point However, lead. Eight, eight for Jeff Hopkins. Eight. Four fifty two. So he's tied with David Powell right now. Keith is going and to shoot a twelve. Yeah. Keith Allstrom currently at four forty three with puts a Puts him at a four fifty five. Upper twelve is falling. Upper twelve got is it. Up yep. For Keith wow. is now our new leader. Keith's got a three-point three point lead. lead. Now, got Keith now his mind's got to be going, oh, oh, uh oh now what do I do? <laughs> you don't change anything, Keith. You 12 this one. Keep going. And make these guys come and get you. 12 bonus rings at this point. Fourth, Joe Pitt at 450. And third yeah, and Keith's a tree trimmer by trade, so he says he's Anybody used to this heat. <laughs> this I don't think we'll anybody's to used to this heat. I don't believe zero. that. His we wife, Gina, first, is one of our, third, I guess, we'll like a range officials. She helps with yep, all the scores and updates the boards out there. Absolutely. She's always by his side and by all of our sides out there when we're shooting our rounds are good people. She is a huge help to us at Competition Number Archery Media. There's our leader right there. There he is. Got his flip down magnifiers up there. Sweating a little bit. <laughs> we'll start There's big minute. Jeff Hopkins There's right Jeff. there. Let's see what he does. He Now, Jeff Jeff may say, okay, I shot an eight on that all day. Let's 14 this coyote. I wouldn't be surprised. No, nice. he was shooting at a 12. Point. He got a 10. Here comes Keith. Keith's in a really good spot. Get you a 10 right here, buddy, at least. 12 would do you really well. Yeah, he's he saw everyone else. He's shooting good enough. It wouldn't surprise me oh, if he 12 oh. it. Good team. Ah, uh, center 10. Yep. Okay. Nothing wrong with that. So Keith's going to take a three point, depending on what David Pyle did. Yeah. Keith's going to take a three point okay, lead. First up, potentially into the final Keith area. Allstrom. 10 for Keith Here we go. 10 for Keith. 10 for Keith. 4, 6, 5. David Pyle. This is David Pyle. 4.52. Upper 12 was called. Upper 12 was called. Mm. Looks good from here. And there it is. Good shot, Perfect. David Powell. 464. 464. There it is. Your first shoot down 13. ever. He's not scared, is he? No, not at all. Next up, Joe Pitt. I will say on record, good job, David Powell. 10 for Joe Pitt. That's great. 10 for Joe. 460. Still within five points of our leader. It's not over. Mark no. Kesey, currently at 443. Looks like Mark went for that 14. He did. He looks like he's about two and a half to three inches low yep. from here. Yep. And just going to be off on that. Eight, eight points. For Mark Kesey. 451. For so Mark for will not make the fifth and or sixth and final arrow. At 452. I shot with Mark today. He shot a good round today. He really did. Yeah. He's and been for Jeff. Ten He's been playing Hopkins. a good game okay. lately. Four, Going six, two. Wow. wow. First in fourth place. Look at that. Joe the Pitt scores will update on the Next screen. Jeff Hopkins four, four, six, three, five for Keith Alston. Four, 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 for David Pyle. Four, sixty, two for Jeff Hopkins. Four, sixty for Joe Pitt. Mark Kesey's going to finish in fifth at four, fifty, one. But everybody else is shooting. This last, the last chance, last arrow, will be. Lowest score to highest score. So Joe Pitt's going to shoot first, then Hopkins will shoot second, David Powell will shoot third, and then Keith will know exactly what he has to do to try to win his first senior pro tournament. Yeah, and they will uh, get a couple minutes to judge this target. Uh, Scott Parrott is going to either bring out a new one or he's going to move them to a different position. We don't know yet. He is returning arrows to the archers. I would like to see, as close as this race is, something with some distance to 
to really make these guys think and decide. I mean, they they spent two full days and five He's extra targets the right now. You know, the give them a chance to, yeah. you know, earn this thing, you know. Right. If you put it at so a real close distance, yeah. almost everybody's going to hit it. There's really not much chance. People watch the NASCAR races for the crash. Yeah. I'm not wishing a crash on anybody. But you really got to make the guys think, do I go for the 12? Do I shoot yeah. at the 14? If it's at 25 yards, it's a no-brainer. Yeah. Everybody's going to shoot at the 14, or they should, depending on what happens in front of them. But the coyote... Pretty small target in general, and it's uh, yeah, it's Look. not easy even when it is close. So it looks like they will be shooting at the coyote, and then what we'll probably see is we'll see Scott Parrott move them to a different position, so they're not yes. shooting the exact same uh, distance. I see him out there with his right, range finder. Well, so they've moved them, kind of just slid them, yeah. Yeah, the coyote was number five position, so they've moved them over in between three and four, as you can see, and moved them up about three and a half to four yards. So with a, with a, a real tiny bit of geometry or math, um, they're going to have a real good idea of how far this thing is. But it is one of those small targets, and Darren Christianberry, I am nowhere near on the level of these folks, but those small targets, man, they make me nervous. They, well, there's not a lot of room for error. Nope. And if you shoot at the 14, obviously, if you make a mistake, high, low, right, whatever, you could shoot at eight. If you get too far high or too far left, you shoot a five. It makes it a lot easier for the guy to behind you to, yeah. or the guy behind you to, you know, take a spot away from you. So Joe's going to shoot first. He's He needs at least a bonus ring to force David to shoot a bonus ring, or no, to force Jeff to shoot a bonus ring. Yeah. Um, Joe needs it. So is he going to shoot the 14? I don't know. Probably. I would probably. He can see it. He probably knows how far it is or really, really close. So I think okay. I think Joe shoots at the 14 here. Yeah. He needs it to force Jeff to hit a ring to get on the podium. He's looking at his odds of shooting for second. And yeah, let's talk about that. The difference between on the podium and off the podium, we're talking thousands of dollars. Thousands of dollars, yeah. Now, third to fourth, it, it, you have manufacturer's contingency, so there is a pretty good bump. Uh, first to third is a bunch. Yeah. Um, the winners get some handsome checks, depending on what equipment they're shooting. But I would think, I would think Joe's going to shoot the 14 right here to force the guys behind him to do something. Why not? Worst he's going to finish is fourth. That's an eight, just oh, low left just of low. it. Good try, Joe. Yeah. So let's see what we got. Joe's got a 468. Jeff shoots next. He's going to need eight points to at least get third. He's six points behind Joe. There is no seven ring, so if he shoots an eight, he's guaranteed podium. Three if he points behind Keith Alstrom. If he shoots a 12 and David Powell shoots a 10, then Jeff gets second because of bonus rings. Knowing Jeff Hopkins, he needs the 14 is really his only path to win. Mm -hmm. And he, he just doesn't go for – he's not like, oh, I want to make the podium. No. he's He'll – Four, if he shoots at the 14, if he misses and shoots an 8, he gets third. You know, worst case scenario, he yeah. gets third. But he has to 14 it to make the guys in first and second right, force them to do something. So you're looking at Hopkins there, too. He is shooting a bow called the Matthews Phase 4, which is most commonly known as a hunting bow. But he's been shooting it as shooter of the year status all year. And he got, got it. it. Left side. Oh, oh, man. Yep. That's what that guy does. That's Four, <laughs> seven, six. All right, let's see. So he is now. Man. Now David Powell has to shoot a 12 to tie him, and Jeff yep. still gets him on bonus ring, so David has to shoot a 14. Wow. Yeah, for anybody out there who thinks a hunting bow can't compete at the highest level, <laughs> there you go. Uh, quote, unquote, hunting bow. He's shooting it good. He is. He's shooting it so good. He talks about it every time I see him. He can shoot any one of the Matthews bows he wants. Mm -hmm. He shoots that one. He shoots it well. I mean, I said earlier, he hits stuff that other people don't hit. You know, we step up to like a 48-yard javelina, and I'm thinking, get you a 10 right here and get on to the next one. Jeff's like, boop, 12. I'm like, gosh, how do you beat that, you know? He forces you to shoot rings because he's that good. Yeah. 
There's a good look at David. All right, here's a big arrow. First shoot down. Yep. He needs a 14 right here to overtake Jeff. And if he 14s it, Keith will have to 14 it to win. Oh, looks like a 10. That could be a 10. Yeah. I assume, it's so I close. assume he was shooting at that 14. Yeah. Let's see what we got. What's he got? Oh, Ten that's points. Close. He did get it. So four, four seventy-four. So Keith needs a twelve. If Keith a shoots a twelve, he's at a four seventy-seven. He would beat Jeff by one point. Wow. If he shoots a ten, he loses, or he gets second. All right. So walk us through the mental situation right now. Keith Ostrom, he's never won a pro tournament before. He needs a bonus ring on a small target. I think his comfort zone is upper 12. Keith always shoots uppers. He just needs a bonus ring. So aiming at the 14, he might be like, mm, I'm not real comfortable aiming out there. Even though I think he can see it really well, I think right. Keith's so comfortable we'll shooting upper 12s that he's going to try to hit this 12 to win this tournament. That's my thought. Right. I just think he'd be more comfortable aiming in that 10. Here he goes. Doing his normal thing. If he hits the 12, he wins. Looks cool. Got, Got it. it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what a yes. shot. That is it. 477. A lot of the archers are very <laughs> stoic individuals, but that's that what was shooting awesome. your first, winning your first pro tournament. That's what it looks like. Good for so Keith I Alstrom mean, right there. Hopkins, He's like, did I hit it? Are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> I won. Yeah, there he is. <laughs> Great reaction. Oh, that is awesome. <laughs> those lead changes and those desperate wow. Half shots come across. Really he well is breathing heavy right now. I see that. <laughs> That's so good. So good. So I'm giving a hug there to Scott Parrott, who shot in that division with Keith for a while. So what a well earned win right oh, there. That's incredible. 14s and 14s and 12s. And what a well deserved win. Keith Alstrom. He's going to come on over here and get to our booth. And we can't wait to talk to him. <laughs> <laughs> He's giving us the thumbs up. <laughs> He's giving oh, us the thumbs so up. Awesome. Walking by. So, there he is, Keith Alstrom. Hey, buddy. First ever pro class win. You had to shoot a 12 bonus ring on the smallest target out there. How are you feeling right now? Oh, man. It's unbelievable. I, I worked hard for this. <sighs> Hey, it's okay. Catch your, catch your breath, man. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. These guys I shoot against are phenomenal. And uh, just to be competing with them for the amount of years I've been shooting is a blessing. And uh, this is amazing. Keith, I shot with you all day today. You shot an awesome round. You, you, you fought off a really good shoot-off out there to win your first tournament. Checking that box as a classic champion. That's a pretty big deal, buddy. How how are you feeling right now? Uh, overwhelmed, I know, but man, you shot amazing today. I'm overwhelmed, and I did shoot my bow very good today. Uh, stoked, <laughs> buddy. I'm happy for you. Congratulations. What a great weekend. Thank you, buddy. Congratulations, Keith, Senior Pro Classic Champion. Thanks, PJ. <laughs> Oh, that was great. Good for him. All right, folks, don't go anywhere. We will be right back with Senior Known Pro from the ASA Classic in Coleman, Alabama.
Moving on, after that awesome shoot-off there in the senior pro class, we're going to move on to your senior known pro. And your fifth place qualifiers from Franklin, West Virginia, shooting for PSE, Keith Trail. Your fourth place qualifier, shooting for Elite from Bicyrus, Missouri, Doug Kyle. And your third place qualifier from Moberly, Missouri, shooting for PSE, Paul Penrod. And your second place qualifier from an Indian named town in Oklahoma that I should be able to pronounce, but I'm not going to even try. Shooting for elite, Mr. Chad Hilburn. And your first place qualifier from Columbiana, Ohio, shooting for Matthews, Randy. Morocco. All right, Darren. So now we have senior known pro. We should mention that uh, targets Thank will be Nathan. moved before okay, our final open Morocco pro divisions. But we can talk about target distances up, now. So gotcha. target number one, the Lynx, is class. 43 yards. Mm -hmm. Target number two, which is the deer, is 39 yards. The hyena is at 49 yards. That awe dad everybody's pouncing on is 28 yards. And the coyote is at 37 yards. Nice. No wonder they're hitting that big old 14 ring, 28, 28 yards, yards. Now these guys should hit some rings as well. They're going to be using range finders. They're going to click the target. Yes. They're going to know the exact distance to set their sight. They're going to aim accordingly and try to get the highest points on every single target. That is the distance or the difference between what we just saw in the open division and now we are at the known division so they can oh, use we'll range finders. Range. Yep. There's a good look at Doug Kyle. I know we talked about Jeff Hopkins shooting a hunting bow. Doug Kyle shooting the carbon arrow from Elite, and it's a hunting bow. There's Mr. Keith Trail. He's a well known target archer, good at every game he plays. And he comes out swinging, shooting at the 14 on that coyote. There's a good look at Southpaw Doug Kyle, his first pro shoot down. Yeah, we should mention later we're going to see Kyle Douglas. <laughs> yes. We got Douglas Kyle, Kyle Douglas. And he shot at the 14, so they are shooting at some rings. Randy Morocco looks like he hit really low on that Lynx, and that concerns me because he knew the yeah. distance on that. Five for Randy. Was that Randy shooting a five? Hmm, 443 now? Interesting. I can't see. I couldn't see a shot. A little bit of wind can make a huge difference, too, in these conditions. Next up, Chad Hilbert. Yeah, we did just have this wind kick up out of nowhere. Yeah. Papers went flying. And Chad got a 10 on the deer, so he's going to go to 440, and for Paul which Randy's eight-point lead with that five is now only a three-point lead. So the game's changed already. For Paul Paul's going to go to a 438. He's just now five points out of the lead. So, that, I mean, that's just how important every arrow is. We've shot one arrow. Randy's lead went from eight down to three. Looks like Doug Kyle shot at a 14, right. and he did not hit it. Mm -mm. So did Keith Trail. Doug at least got eight points. I don't think Keith is going to be as fortunate as him. So an eight for Doug, 433 now. Douglas, are you nervous? He says, no. Why should I be? Keith Trail, I forget if you mentioned Darren, but Vegas champ won all kinds oh, yeah. of indoor stuff. Yeah, I said he's good at every game he plays. Yep. Unfortunately, he took a five right there, which puts him at a four, two, six. And he is 17 points behind the leader right now. He's fairly new to the 3D game. If there's one game that he hasn't played as much as the others, it would be this one. I shot Open but Pro. He's learning. With, yeah, I shot Open Pro with Keith back in the early to mid 2000s. Is that right? And then when the known game came on, 
he started well. shooting some known, but he really is a good dot shooter, good yeah. indoor shooter. Um, he, he's a good archer. There's Paul Penrod. Paul's a good shooter. He's, he shoots good at redding, shoots good at the indoor stuff, obviously shoots good at 3D. I like a well-rounded archer. That's a great look right there. Three archers, three targets. The target that each archer's shooting is right below him. So Keith's shooting the lynx, right, Randy's the shooting line. the deer, yeah. and Chad is shooting that hyena. You'll be able to see exactly where they hit with this view. Yeah, this is nice. Get to look at each archer and where they're shooting. Oh, Randy's oh, got something going yeah, on. Something. I, I, that's that he. He yeah. looks puzzled. He's looking. That's that's not. No. He shot way low on the first one, way low right on that one. That's for, not. That's for what he had to do today to come back. Yeah. He, that, he wasn't shooting like that. There's Doug Kyle shooting that carbon era, a hunting bow from Elite. He's going to take a 10. It's an interesting follow through, but he got 10 points out of that. All right. First up, Keith Trail currently at 426. Keith Trail takes an eight, four, thirty-four. Next up, coming over to the deer, thirty-nine yard hmm. deer. Eight for Randy Morocco. Four fifty-one. Yeah, Randy's dropped seven points already. I'm, I'm, mm. I'm puzzled. He looks puzzled, so he thinks. Yeah. He's also going. I don't know what's going on. Yeah, something's happened there. Chad Hilberg, 10 for Chad's Chad. Chad's got a 10, so he's at 450. Randy just has a one-point lead over Chad now. And, I mean, it, it could be anything. It could yeah. be something in his sight. His rest could have just slipped it, a little it, bit, it bent. Could, it could be a sweaty grip. It's ho yeah. so hot if his palm slips at all on his bow, it makes a, a huge difference on where the Im arrow impacts. They're looking at the 8-5 call here on this arrow, I believe. Mm, oh, looks yeah, yeah, it is a five, man. just wide. So is that Paul Penrod 443 now? That was Paul, yes. Mm. There's a look at Doug Kyle and see his shot. He got a 10. He got 10 points, puts him at 443. So he's tied with Paul now for third. First and second have a seven and eight point lead, and Paul and Doug are fighting for third right now. There we go, the score is updated. But Randy with a one point lead. Ben, I mean, mm -hmm. Darren, what do you do? Well, and I just, I just have to go back again to give credit where credit's due. You guys saw if you didn't see, or you may, hopefully you did see, the senior pros just shot off. They were judging the distance, and they shot 12s and 14s, and it was awesome. These guys are using range finders. Now, again, they got sweaty hands. It's hot out there. They may see real bright, shiny spots on these targets. Maybe they're not seeing their pin as clearly as they can, you know. But, golly, it's so awesome to watch yeah. those guys that are guessing shoot rings. What What's your – mindset if you're Randy where clearly something is off. I'm aiming closer to center of the 10 now. Hey, let's aim center 10, give myself the biggest margin for error and see if it's something it's consistent that I can adjust real quick and get back to hitting my zero. Yeah. Because if he aims hard at another 12 and shoots low or low right, he could shoot another 8 or 5 and lose, lose the tournament. <laughs> if you aim towards center 10, you may still catch a 10. If it still hits a little low or a little right, you can adjust your sight real quick to compensate. Randy won our first two tournaments of the year. So he has two wins under his belt, and then Tim Gillingham came in and won the next three. All right, gentlemen. And now Randy was back on top. I'm sure he wants to win this one. As we mentioned, he took Shooter of the Year, mm -hmm. but I know he wants a classic champ. Yeah, that's the ideal weekend is the sweep, but that's a really good look at Paul Penrod right there. Good, steady shooter. Boom, nice break on his shot. And that's 14 that points. That's a 14 for Paul. He's yeah, gonna, high five. He's going to like that. Doug oh, Kyle that's shooting so close. at 14. That's a 43-yard target, so that's no easy task right there. That's close. Okay, first up, Douglas Kyle. Douglas Kyle. His first shoot down. They're looking. I can't see because of the shadow. The it glasses. looks like he's got it. Oh, man. 
14 yes, points. Yes, it is. Doug Kyle, 14 points, 457. 57. That'll help his cause. Ah, absolutely. Oof. Five for Keith. Five for Keith Trail. Mm. That going at Keith, 439. Known distance, that 14 ring is quite elusive. Going around to the hyena. This one is the long one, 49 right, yards. Marco, let's see if he's got it sorted out yet. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't see where his arrow hit, no. but that's after you've shot, after you've missed two shorter ones, and you have to go with that long one. It. They're giving it a look. It looks was like. It? They're, are they calling oh, for it's that at upper least 12? At 10, yeah. yeah. 12. Upper 12 was called. 10 no, points. 10. All right. 461. Looks like he's back on track, though. Yeah. So Chad Hilburn is on the Audad, and it looks he's like he smoked Hilburn. that 14. It sure does. Boom, there's a good look at him hitting that 14. Good shot, Chad. 14, 14, 14 points. He's going to take over the lead. Four, six, four. He still trails Randy by six bonus rings. Now here Rings comes Paul on that next. Penrod. For Paul Penrod, current 443. And I, yep, he got 14 got points it. as well. Four, five, Four, five seven. seven. All right. Where are we at now? We got a little juggling of positions. Yeah, let's see. We'll get a score update here and run through it real quick. But I believe Chad Hillburn's your new leader so at 464. 464. Yep. Randy's at 461. Paul and Douglas are still yep, there it is. There it Randy's is. at 461, and then Paul and Doug Kyle are tied at 457. And it looks like they might be tied on bonus rings as well. So they would shoot if they stay tied on score and bonus rings, they would shoot off for that position. So Darren, Randy Morocco, on he's on the closest one. Everybody's been 14ing it. He called up. He called up her on the hyena and barely missed it at 49 yards. So I'd say whatever he had going on, he's figured out. So okay. I think now, okay, it's 28. It's marked up like crazy. It's my only chance to get okay. back in this tournament. Yeah. I got to go for it, regardless of where I think my arrow's going to hit. Put the pin as close to the center as you can, execute, and hope it hits. Normally, he would pounce on this. Yeah, there's a good look at Chad. He's going to the Coyote. He shot an upper 12, and it looks called, like. He called the Yeah, Randy's hitting to the right. Oh, He's Randy low right it. on that. That's going to be a five. He's just shaking his head. Hmm. Wow. There's Doug Kyle just coming to full draw now. He's on the deer, so he may be trying to shoot another 14. He's taking his time. And that deer's 39 yards, and he went at it. Go and he smoked it. Center punched it. He's not giving up, is he? All right. He is not. Ring time, kids. He is not wow. giving up. First up. Paul Penrod, 14 for Paul That's Penrod. crazy. Paul Penrod, 14, 14 for Paul. 471. Wow. Now we're seeing these guys get I wasn't warmed even, up. I wasn't even paying attention to now that. Now they're warming yeah. up. And here's another one. Doug Kyle with a 14. 471. That's awesome. How about for Keith Trail? Keith Trail, he shot at the 12, it looks like. Oh, yeah, he's... Looks like it might be a little low. Eight for Keith. Oh. oh. Eight points for Keith. So four forty seven. Total away from almost leading this thing. Now come around to Randy. All right. Randy Morocco. Currently three points behind. Boy, yeah. Anything play. can happen. Can you shoot the you hate to see it when it seems to clearly be an equipment issue. Yeah, he's got something going on, I think. He did get an eight. Okay, I thought he might have shot a five right there. 469. So he goes two points behind Doug and Paul. So he's not out of it. They got no. one more target regulation, then they'll have the last chance, sixth and final arrow. Chad's going to go to 76 here. Oh, no, he only got a – no, I thought he got a 12. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He does go to 76. 476. So he takes a five-point lead. Yes, he does. Wow, that's big. Chad Hilburn is now sitting on a seven. That is big. 
This is going to our fifth arrow here. I'm going to have to call the CEO. Elite Archery might be spending some more contingency money. Good look. Yes, sir. There he's using his rangefinder. He's clicking that target to find the exact distance. You know, I, what tar he's going to the hyena, so it's 49 yards. So his his rangefinder may say 47.3. Yep. It may say 48.9. It's going to say something like that. He's, you can see him dial the sight to the exact distance right there, and then he's going to aim accordingly and try to pick off another ring. Checking it with the magnifier because anybody that's over 50 knows those little bitty numbers and lines are hard to see. You can't see anything nope. on that. I say it all the time. The struggle is real. Oh, it, man. It's a fact. There's <laughs> Paul Penrod. I, I saw Doug Kyle in the parking lot earlier, and he was like, man, it took me all year, but I finally yeah. made it. Yep. He was so excited. Good for him. <laughs> There's Chad. There's Paul. Everybody trying to hit another ring. This is the fifth arrow. Oh, Ooh. Paul went for yeah, it. Yeah, he did. He fired low. Yep. Looked like that really surprised him when it went off. Now, if Doug was watching to see what to do, he may not have to shoot at a 14 here. A 12 would make more sense. Yeah. But a 14 would be amazing. Ooh, and I think oh, he shot man. an eight, maybe. Can't see. Oh, boy, that's close. Yeah, I can't tell what that is. We'll yeah. see here in a second. So this is Chad. Yep. Okay. He'll take a 10. Okay. Nothing wrong with that. He didn't give anything back. 486. Yep. So he's still going to be in first place regardless of what these guys do. Paul is an 8. So he's going to go to 479. That's going to be a 7-point lead over Paul for Chad, which is huge with one arrow to go. Douglas There's a look Kyle. at Doug Kyle. Upper 12 was being called. See that arrow drop in there? I'm not sure if he's got a 10 or an 8. They're going to look at it here. Hmm. It looks wide. Oh, yeah. I'm going to guess 8, but I've been wrong a million times. It is nope. an 8. It is an 8. 4, <laughs> 7, 9. So it's up to Randy to kind of put some pressure on Chad. Keith went for the 14, and he's at least close. I think he got it. <laughs> I think I heard him say finally, and yep, he's yep, in there right he there. Is. There's All a good right, look Keith. at it. Good deal. 461. Keith is going to finish in fifth, but the rest of the guys are within 10 points. Chad, we'll see what Randy does here. Yeah, he's shooting to the right. Yeah, I think so he, he went does upper. Does he have his cone out? He does. Okay, so he did call upper. Yeah. He's right at the bottom of it. It's either. Yeah, he's on the. Oh, it's really close. I can't tell. Oh, man. That's what we call pulling the line, Darren. Eight. For Randy, just that can't, no, no, no. That's no, not an eight. No, no. There he goes. Ten. Yep. He's correcting that. Ten. Gave there Randy a heart I was going to say, wow. <laughs> Gave him a heart attack there. <laughs> We were going to have to do we we're going to have to do scoring training with Scott again real quick. All right, now. Okay, 479. This is Wow. I mean, the podium is up for grabs. First place Chad is in pretty good position there, but second, third. Yeah, they're, they're, they're all tied at 479. Yep. So, bonus rings are going to decide who of the 479s are going to shoot first. So, whoever right. has the lowest amount of bonus rings will shoot first, which Oh, it's too much math to do. They may all be tied on that as well. Randy has way more bonus rings, so Randy's going to shoot third. Uh, Doug or Paul's going to shoot first and second. And then Chad, as long as Chad can shoot a 10 on this final arrow, he cannot lose this tournament. And I believe this is Chad's his first pro class win in the yeah. ASA. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it would be. To my knowledge, yes. Keith is, we should mention, Keith is going to finish in fifth place. Mm -hmm. uh, he will not be in the last shot because he is not within 10 points of our leader. And so what they've done, Darren, is we're going with the deer that did not bring out a new target. Yep. So they're going to shoot at the deer. It's known distance, but it looks like 
Scott Parrott just kind of moved them off th their stake. And you can see when – there you go. See the see the arrow holes in that target? That yeah. 14 has – where Doug Kyle hit it is an amazing aiming spot. Those guys will be able to see that in their scope. So if they want to try to shoot that 14, it's very easily seen now. You can see where Paul hit straight below it. You can see where Doug smoked it. They will they will be able to see that in their scopes. It is lit up really good. Mm -hmm. we've, we've shifted the field of play from years past now, and it's the setting sun is just right on the targets. I think it's cooling off, though. You do? No. <laughs> I was going to say, I don't think so. <laughs> that was 100% sarcasm, PJ. If it PJ. is, I have my sweat glands are unaware. I have, this, <laughs> I have this little sweat mustache that's like the <laughs> best mustache I've ever grown. It's made of sweat. <laughs> oh, wow. We get the fortune of being under this tent, which I think is acting like an oh, oven. Exactly. The shade is nice, but well, there's no air moving. Cool. Let's get back to some archery. All right. Let's see what happens. Doug's adjusting his sight, so I'm assuming he's getting ready to go first. So he's probably yeah, got the least amount like of it. bonus rings. With him knowing the distance, with two, th with three guys behind me yet to shoot, I think the only play, if I was in Doug's shoes, would be 14 right here. Got to, especially in the known class. Yeah, and they know the distance. They know the distance. He's already 14 at once. He's got a good mark to aim at again. Um, put the pressure on the guys behind you. So as we mentioned, we were giving out distances on these targets. They will be moved before we get to our next batch of unknown distance archers. So no danger of them knowing anything. If they're listening, hopefully they're practicing. Yeah, here goes Doug. He needs a bonus ring to put pressure on the guys behind him. Oh, he shoots an eight straight just under went it. Low. Straight low. Now, if the guys behind him go, okay, I want to guarantee a podium, yep. they shoot a 10. You know, if they shoot a 10, they're going to knock Doug into fourth place. So if your mindset is I want to get on the podium and cash a check, you try to shoot a try to shoot a 12 but miss in the 10 ring. If you're like, I want to try to win, then you probably go back at the 14 again. Yeah, 487, that moves him to Doug Kyle. So Paul has to go next because I know Randy had a – seven bonus ring lead over anybody when we started. So I know, yeah, Paul is up next. With me being behind the leader by seven points, I think I move over to the 12 right here if it's me. Guarantee myself a podium. Yep. If I miss the 12, miss in the 10 ring, since Doug shot the eight, I think that's, of course, they're out there trying to win this tournament. I'm sitting here trying to analyze what each guy's doing. It's a it's different way of thinking, I know, but let's see what Paul decides to do. If he's got Doug on bonus rings, which I'm assuming he does since he's shooting second. Now, there you go. He got at least a 10. If he called up or he got it. Yeah, I think so. Oh, yeah, for sure. Okay, so he's going to. He's going to end up ahead of Doug on this. He did call upper. All right, let's give Scott Perry a round of applause. 12 points. He's welcome to see. There's a 12 for Paul. <laughs> Congratulations. Okay. So that, right. that puts him at a 492 right now. So what that does is that forces Randy to hit a bonus ring. If Randy just shoots a 10, Paul's guaranteed second place. To take second place. Randy has to shoot a ring to take over second away from Paul. His confidence has to be just yeah. gone. He's going to call upper. Call he just upper. set the cone out. Yep. He needs this bonus ring to get second because all Chad has to do is shoot a 10 to win this thing. And a 10, if he misses, a 10 would get him in third. He got it. So, twelve the points. Ring. He sure did. All right. So he's going to go to a four. Four ninety-two. Four ninety-two. 
491. Is that right? Yeah, 491. He'll be tied with Paul, but has more bonus rings, so he'll go to second. Paul will go to third. Chad needs an eight to win. He's five points behind the two guys right now. Chad needs to hit that great big lung area on that target to win this tournament. I would feel pretty good about myself right here. Fine shoot off, Chad Hilburn. Here he goes. Eight points to win. They gave him high five. So he has shot that 10. center 10. <laughs> Fantastic shoot Chad off, Hilburn Chad Hilburn. Hilburn gets his first win. Congratulations. To him. Classic champ. You know, this is a new division for us this year at the ASA, the senior <laughs> known pro. So a lot of these guys we're seeing for the first time. And there he goes. He takes his first ASA pro class That's win. That's awesome. Chad's going to come over to the headset here and talk to us. That's exciting, Dan. That's good. Our first two rounds. We got our we got first two wins ever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Those, I mean, to to not have that. And Keith's been in a lot of shoot offs. Yeah, you know, so he's got some shoot off experience. But to to have a chance to win, but then Chad's like, let's see what happens, and he did it on his first try. Yep. There he goes. I'm looking through the screen at his shadow, and there we are. Chad Hilburn's got the headset on their first pro class win. Chad, how does that feel? Oh, it's nerve wracking. <laughs> I'm, I'm still shaking. <laughs> it's just like you've been doing it all your life, right? Yeah, yeah. Not, not really, there. <laughs> Chad, that goes by really fast out there, and and you worked your way through that shoot off. You had a seven point lead, I think. Regardless of what those guys did, I made a comment that all you needed to do was hit a ten to win this thing. All you actually needed to do was hit an eight. How big or how small is that eight ring when you have to have it there on that last arrow? You know, honestly, I was just trying to stick it in the middle, there and, and just pull through the shot. <laughs> buddy, you did a great job. Congrats on the Classic Championship. Fine weekend, buddy. Thank you. All right, folks, that is going to do it for us here with the Senior Known Pro Class. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back starting off right, with the Women's the Known Pro Division at the ASA Classic. Championship Classic. And shooter the year. First up, the shooter. Is Keith Olson. Ryan Jeffries, Mr. Ryan Reed, Chris Hacker, Alan Connor, Benny Barger, and your number one qualifier from Voorheesville, New York, Jacob Sluzard. I thought I could hang with these guys and I wanted to prove that, but winning after five tournaments is it's just a lot. Shoot down, Sharon Wallace. Your, your first place qualifier, Jeff Rainey. Your number one qualifier, Miss Cara Kelly. Mr. Levi Morgan. That's Mr. McCarthy.
<laughs> Good shot for Carl. Yeah. Elite is the world's most advanced and accurate archery experience. We challenge you to go to your local retailer and ask for Elite to demo the Omnia today. CBE, that's custom bow equipment. I'm talking about field tested, yeah. fully improving. Wow, what a match. Premium archery accessories. Check out the full line at custombowequipment.com. The weather at the 2023 ASA Classic in Coleman, Alabama has been every bit as wild as you'd expect in the deep south in August. Wind, rain, lightning, heat, and drenching humidity. The archers competing in the six ASA Pro Classes have dealt with all of it the past two days in the woods surrounding St. Bernard's Prep. 
But now it's time to get out of the cover and onto the pitch for the Pro Pressure Point shoot downs to see who has what it takes to rise above the weather and take home the coveted title of classic champion. Let's get to the action right now. All right, welcome everybody to the 2023 ASA Classic in Coleman, Alabama. This is the culmination of our ASA season, and this is where we crown our Shooters of the Year. Darren Christian Berry, tell us what we're looking at here. In the open pro, Dan McCarthy edged out Levi Morgan. Known pro Kyle Douglas came for behind to capture the title. Senior pro Jeff Hopkins has pretty well dominated the class all year. He takes home the title. Randy Morocco came from behind as another takeover in the senior known pro. Cara Kelly has had a strong lead for most of the year. She finished on top. Paige Pierce has yet to be defeated all year, and she won the women's known pro pretty easily. Shooter of the year, Darren, of course, is the archer who is most consistent all year. They take all the scores add them up together you know that's why we love the classic we get to see who those shooter of the year and again it comes down to the end in some of these uh divisions it does they do get we shoot five qualifying tournaments before the classic they do get a drop their worst score of the year but the classic score has to count towards shooter of the year so you definitely don't want to have a bad weekend this weekend because it can cost you the title so shooter of the year out of the way now we're getting to classic champs and darren christianberry it's hot. It is very hot. We had rain <laughs> all day yesterday, had a six hour delay. We got 20 targets in yesterday. We finished our other 20 target round at 730 this morning. So everybody shot their 40 qualifying tournaments. Now we're out here in the wide open baking sun. Uh, everybody's sweating profusely, but we're going to see some good shooting. We are definitely. Before we get to the action, though, Darren, ASA President Josh Grind, he's going to set the stage for this weekend's ASA Classic. I'm going to lay down my burdens way down, down by the riverside. I'm absolutely positive we're about to get wet. <laughs> the classic it's the last one sixth of the year this is mr jerry sheehan this is uncle ray with uncle ray outdoors y'all have a good weekend merry christmas uh, so we're at the delta mckenzie asa classic and this is a final event of the 2023 season we're at saint bernard's preparatory and abbey uh, so there's a preparatory high school here there's an abbey and you see monks walking around here and it's in coleman alabama this is an amazing facility probably one of the most picturesque facilities we're at all year You've got the chapel with the bell tower and the dormitories. The range layout here is phenomenal. We've got a variety of terrains from kind of a more traditional hardwood forest to what the pros refer to as the dark forest, which is just a, a pine tree forest that is super thick. So this, this event and venue is, is one of my favorites as far as just the way everything lays out with the facilities here, the vendor area. So. Uh, love coming to St. Bernard's and the, the city of Coleman is, is fantastic for it. If you ask the shooters, they're going to tell you that, no, the ASA, we want to be the classic champion. It is kind of our big event, you know, the, the final event of the year. You'll hear the shooters refer to this as their national championship for 3D. And so it is a big deal. It also, uh, at the classic, we crown our shooter of the year and rookie of the years. And, and those have additional payouts and bragging rights. So there's a lot going on this week and, and a lot of stuff that builds excitement for the shooters. So with the completion of the 2023 season, this is my second complete year um, as a partner with Mike, and it's been a phenomenal year. Uh, it's one more year that I've got to build relationships with the local communities, the people here at Coleman, all the venues we do. Uh, we, we're super blessed at the ASA to just work with awesome communities, awesome individuals that help us put on um, these, these shoots. We couldn't do it on our own. And, uh, with that, you know, we've built more relationships and, and I love the shooters and, and getting to catch up with them at events. Go to your right. That's it, right there. And the, the ASA staff, you know, this is Scott Parrott's second year, um, his first year full time as a tournament director. 
and Federation director. So last year he was kind of working under Don Bailey. I think Scott has done a phenomenal job uh, in 2023, kind of spreading his wings and, and making the ranges his own. And I think, you know, the feedback we hear from the shooters, he's doing a fantastic job. He's, he's really putting a lot of energy into the Federation. So 2023 was a year where we, we kind of got to evaluate where we are as a, as a company um, through shooters and community and, and the other things that we do. And we're just super excited about where the ASA has come this year. And we're, we know that the best is yet to come and we're very excited about 2024 season. We're going to take a quick look here at this Delta McKenzie Lynx target. Now this is how these arrows are going to be scored. I'll do my best to keep the shadows off the target. But anywhere in the target is five points. Anywhere inside this big ring is eight points. You got your four inch 10 ring right here, lower 12, upper 12, and a 14 ring. You can miss that much and be eight points, or you can just touch it and be 14 points, or you can shoot a five. This is all about risk and reward. And for these guys and gals that are judging the distance on this target, this particular target, I know from experience, looks different when it's turned around, like you're looking at the face of the target versus away. So these bring different challenges for everybody. So this is where it all happens right here. All right, Nathan, thank you for that explanation. Folks, don't go anywhere. We're going to be right back here at the ASA Classic with our women's known pro division up first. Don't go anywhere. Qualifier in the women's shoot down. Sharon Wallach. Your first place qualifier. Jeff Rainey. Your number one qualifier, Miss Cara Kelly. Mr. Levi Morgan. That's Mr. McCarthy. Elite is the world's most advanced and accurate archery experience. We challenge you to go to your local retailer and ask for Elite to demo the Omnia today. CBE, that's custom bow equipment. I'm talking about field tested, yeah. fully improving, wow, what a match. Premium archery accessories. Check out the full line at custombowequipment.com. What a shot. He got it. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> so Kyle needs an eight to win. Eight to win. Oh, he went right at it. Enter 10. Done. This guy is unreal. That's it. And he got it. Never played safe killing hands. Hunter Vinny La Selva explains why he shops at LancasterArchery.com. I'm a patient man in the woods, but when it comes to shopping online, not so much. That's why I choose Lancaster Archery Supply. They make it easy to order all my archery gear. 
with thousands of the newest and finest products right at your fingertips, ready to ship to your front door. Here's your order, Vinny. Or tree stand. Hey, depending on where you're hanging out, you might even get it before you get home. For all your archery needs, shop LancasterArchery.com. So I hit my own bounce out. Dude, I haven't tubed somebody's arrow in a while. But I honestly, when it broke, I'm like, you're welcome. Yeah, I'm like, no. Did you do the order, too? That's crazy. I'm just not feeling it today, but I'm just gonna keep doing what I'm doing because it's going good. All right, welcome back everybody to the ASA Classic here in Coleman, Alabama. Women's Known Pro is our division that we're about to get into. Here's our leaderboard. Darren Christianberry, tell us what we're looking at. Yeah, no stranger to the top of the, the group right there. Paige Pierce is leading with a 434, Tanya Guillantine at 430, and then some new faces to the shoot off. Jordan yes. Dearman at 421, Janet Knight at 420, Lexi Hall 417. There's a 17 point spread between first and fifth, but as you've seen, with the 14 ring in play, all these bonus rings, anything can happen. We're going to shoot five or six arrows and see who's going to win this thing. We are for sure. Darren, before we get to the action, we just want to take a look back. Metropolis, Illinois was our last tournament. We want to see how this division shook out there. A stiff wind blew across the open lawn at Fort Massac State Park by the time the women's known pro finalists took the field for the pro pressure point shoot downs. Target one is Paige Pierce from Red Bluff, California. In preparation for that win, division leader Paige Pierce switched bows right before the finals so she could shoot skinny arrows that offer less chance for drifting off the mark. And that's a 10 for Paige right there. That's a good shot at that in that kind of wind. That strategy seemed to pay off because Paige shot a score of two up on the shoot downfield, which is good enough that there was no need for the last chance archery, last chance arrow. That's she had 12. it one anyway. Yeah. And she shoots a 12. Of course. Another win kept Paige perfect on the 2023 ASA season, five for five. <laughs> yeah, that was really stressful. I haven't really shot a, a hinge in that bout of wind before. So that was an experience, let me tell you what. Uh, those weren't the cleanest shots you've probably ever seen from me. But um, <laughs> everybody, when I walked in today, the first four people I ran into said, ooh, are you ready for the win later? And I was like, no, I'm really not. <laughs> I don't know how to aim with my 23s in the wind. I'm not even going to sugarcoat it. So I went to the car. I grabbed my target bow, tuned with my revelations, my skinny arrows. I took my sight off my ASA bow and my whole bar set up and threw it on my target bow and shot some quick marks and came out here and did that. <laughs> All right, well, we want to get to the action as quickly as possible without any further delay. Nathan Brooks, third member of our team, bring out our archers. So getting the action started this afternoon, we'll start off here with the women's known pro division. Your fifth place qualifier from Manitowoc, Wisconsin, shooting for PSE, Lexi Hull.
and from Nauvoo, Alabama, your fourth place qualifier, shooting from Matthews, Janet Knight. Your third place qualifiers from Jefferson City, Missouri, shooting from Matthews, Jordan Deerman. And in second place from Winchester, Kentucky, shooting for Darton, Tanya Gillentine. And making her first appearance out here this year, your first place qualifier shooting for Botec from Red Bluff, California, Paige Pierce. All right, Darren, a little levity there from Nathan Brooks. Of yeah. course, as we mentioned, Paige Pierce has won our previous five events. <laughs> she didn't even crack a smile when she walked in. I think <laughs> she's all business right now. All right. She is. I talked to her earlier, Orange and she said, means you want the absolutely, yes. Sure it has played in her mind. She wants six for six. Oh, I guarantee you she does. You know, that's just a, that's a feat that's not easily done. Right. Um, Paige is a phenomenal shooter. She shoots scores that would rival any of the men's divisions anywhere. Um, we're going to try and make you feel All these ladies can possible. shoot great. Don't yes. get me wrong. Tanya Gillantine, she's a Vegas champion. Shoots 900s at Vegas. I, when I said I didn't know who Lexi Hull well, was, it's Lexi Keller. She got yes. married. I didn't realize who it was. Exactly. Uh, Lexi's a great yeah, shot. You know, I see a couple new faces out there with Jordan and Janet. But, you know, this is going to be fun. But, yeah, Paige wants to win all six. I know she does. Um, and she's gritty. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, Jordan Deerman, you mentioned, she's been working her way up through the ranks here. She was Shooter of the Year in Women's Open B in 2018. Before that, uh, Shooter of the Year Women's K40, 2019 Shooter of the Year Women's K45. Uh, she was second there, but... Um, yeah, so these ladies are no strangers to the big stage. There's a good look at Janet. Oh, she came out firing. For that four point. A lot of people have hit that all dead low right. I wonder why. Yeah, and uh, so we can give you target distances because they are going to move right, them first mm -hmm. up before Page we get to our Page. unknown shooters. Page Page shoots a 10. Page Page shoots a 10. 444. So she's shooting the 43 yard lynx. Next up, we have the 39 yard deer. I'm, for assuming, Tanya. I'm assuming Tanya called up her because she Tanya hit right next to yep. 440 now for 10. her. All right. And we move Jordan. over to Jordan on, this is our longest First target. This is a 49 yard hyena. And you have to start on the hyena at that distance. At Jordan, good strong and shot. 10, well 10 there as well. 10, nothing wrong with that. 431. Janet here coming up to our closest target. This is the Audad. This is 28 yards. Janet's first shoot down ever. First Jim arrow out of her bow, and she said, let's try to get this 14. Why not? I like it. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. And you heard she's from Alabama, so she's got a hometown crowd here. But Eight points. Support Scott her. Doesn't care. You Puts still her to 428. Nothing wrong with going for it. <laughs> she's 14 <laughs> points behind Paige to start, so she really has nothing gets. to lose. But she was only one point behind Lexi's third, so she could 17. try to sneak a podium. Eight for yeah. Lexi. Lexi Hall right, ladies, with, with a next four, about uh, your with an eight. Charles, you lose her to 425. Yes, sir. So nothing changed right there other than yeah. a couple of right. eights for so Janet and Lexi. Paige, of course, is our shooter of the year in this division, obviously winning all five events so far. But this is a new division, women's known pro, first time in the ASA this year. It was a class that Paige fought long and hard for uh, just because she doesn't play the judging game. That's not her thing. And so she wanted to have a place where target archers could come out. Lexi Keller, yeah. Lexi Hull, excuse me, is a prime example of that. You know, we see her at USAT events and all kind of 50-meter target Ladies, events. We'll this is my favorite so, view yes. ever of a shoot down right here. Three yep. archers, the three targets that they're shooting directly below them. The cameras are zoomed in nice and tight on all the scoring rings, and you'll get to see a little pop, pop, pop right here and see what they get instantly. This is a yep. great view, fellas. We're looking at that was Paige with the Paige. first. Lexi is on the left, and Tanya's on the right. Oh, and an 
eight for Lexi, just under that 12. There's a look at Janet. Uh-oh, crept just a little. She, she got it back. Good shot. Ten. So, first up, we have All Lexi right. Hall shooting at the Lexi. links. Eight for Lexi. Eight points for Lexi. Again, this is known distance. So they are using range finder. She's at a 433 now. Come over to Paige. And for our leader, Paige Pierce, currently four points ahead of Ta Tanya. 12. 12. Paige. Four. Five. She now ensures a five, five bonus ring lead also. I'm glad I don't have to shoot against her. No. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. And Tanya, solid 10 for Good her. 10 from Tanya. Who's Paige is a world-class archer, period. Not specifying male, female. She's a world-class yeah. archer. Tanya dropped. Just, she just, Paige took a two-more right. point lead over Tanya there, Jordan but Deerman. Tanya can give her a run for money. She's tough. Yeah. There's a lot of ladies in this class that have some game. Paige has been a dominant force so far this year, but... If anybody can give her a run, it's definitely Jordan. Tanya Gillantine. Ten right there for it's Jordan. Like 441 now for her. New talent coming out to shoot this year. Yeah, Mike Tyrell so well. is talking about the quote-unquote new and talent coming out this year because we're seeing a lot of target archers that and we don't we'll normally see. And that is a 10 for Janet Knight. 438 now for her. So Paige increased her lead by two. She's going to bump up to a 456. We'll see a score update on your screen right there. Tanya, 450. Jordan still in third at 441. Janet, 438. And Lexi, 433. So still got three more arrows in regulation. And then again, anybody that's, with, that's within 10 points of the leader will shoot the last chance, last arrow for the final positions of the tournament. Jordan Deerman's sight set up there. She's got a scope. That box on the side of her bow is a light. Okay. I think light that's up the pin. Is, that, is that the Elvish Tack light? Elvish <coughs> Tack. Yes, that's sir. a cool light. I've, I've got one, but I haven't put it on my bow yet. No. But as that bow's resting, that light goes to sleep. And as soon as you pick that bow up, that light comes back on. It's like a motion sensor light. It's a yeah. cool design. You can see it right there. It saves battery. Yes. You don't have to remember to and turn she off. Oh, and she it. just smashed that 12. Yeah, Tanya's going to let down and reset. Something didn't feel quite right. She'll get her footing. She'll get her grip. Got her fingers back in the release like she likes it. And you'll see she'll get anchored here. She's looking through that black thing in her string. It's a little peep sight. She's going to start putting pressure on that button and pull, pull, pull. And it's going to break. Keep pulling. Uh-oh. Mm, nope. Something's not right. She's got 18 seconds now. I'm sure her husband, Braden, has got her clock. She's used to world archery, so 13, 12, 11, 10. It's plenty of time for her. Boom. She was going oh. for that 14. That's why. And it okay. is so close. Oh, she oh I think she got thing. it. We'll find out in a second. <laughs> Tanya's got some game. First up, we've got <laughs> 10 for Janet. For Janet. 448. Well Yeah, she's going to need right. 14s Let's to put see. pressure on Paige. That's just out. all there is to it. That was Lexi. Lexi. 10 for Lexi. Just over that 12, so better. she's at 443 now. That hyena right there is 49 yards. Is that right. correct? That is correct. That's a poke. Let's go to Paige Pierce. And this is Paige, and she shot a... Well, oh, I've come on. Yeah. 49 <laughs> yards. 468 and 23 bonus rings. So wow. she can't be caught on bonus <laughs> rings. It's going to have to be scored. 12 12. Folks. Good for her. <sighs> well, Tanya did good by 14 this close yes. one. Yep. I think she's got the 14. So she's going to need it because Paige is hit back to back 12. Yeah. Here. Yep, there, there he go. goes. 14, 14 for Tanya. Yep, she got it. Yeah, right in the line. All right. So 464. So that helped her get back to just within four of Paige now. I'm curious to see what Paige will do since it's marked up so well. If she'll go for the kill. Oh, she got it. Jordan Dearman. Nice, yes. Jordan. 453. 
Congratulations. So she's hanging on to third spot pretty good right now. Two tens and a 12, Mike Tyrell noted for Jordan Dearman. Her first pro shoot down. Nerves got to be going, but she seems to be handling them. Yep. Nice and steady out there. Calling upper on this Lynx. There's a good look at Paige. She's checking her marks, getting ready. She runs a computer program. I say program, but she actually has sight marks. Yep. Like, say, what's the target she's shooting now? The Audet. This is the Audet. 28 so, so it's 28 yards. So on her side, it may be like 39.4 on a number scale. So she's going to run her scale. She knows that maybe 39.4 is 28 yards on her sight. So she's going to set it exactly to whatever her rangefinder says. Yep. Pick where she wants to hit. Right, and then... Uh, She's the, got, the odds are good no. she's going to hit her ring. I'd be surprised if she didn't. And so folks were saying, you know, Paige won every event here, so, you know, the class is kind of stacked, but the competition is catching up to her, and don't be fooled. No one works harder at this than Paige She went does. to 12 oh, and got it. 12. Nothing wrong with that, I suppose. Ooh, Paige I shoots think, hours. I think Tanya shot at the 14 on the Kyle. This is gonna did. be this is gonna be a good race. I think she did. I think Janet may have shot a 12 if she called up her there. We're about to find out. There's a good look at yep. Jordan. Okay, nice strong gun. shot. Good follow Jordan through. Gunning. And we have a 10 for Jordan. 10, 10 for, for Jordan. Nice 463. So far she's doing really Janet well, performing nice. really well in Absolutely. the first shoot off. All three ladies are performing so really this well is Janet. Pressure. If she called up or she and got the excitement it. For them, a she ten. did not. She did not. No, so a 10. Done. Four, five, eight for her. Now we got Lexi on the long hyena. Not sure. Can't see it from where ten. I'm sitting. Just, that's a good 10. 453. And for Paige. Our leader has an opportunity to look at that 14 ring, but I think she's going to stay conservative here. 12, went for the 12. Take her 12 hmm. and move on. And the 14's bigger. I, I'm not doubting what she did at all. Yeah. I guess I could say I'm a little surprised, but she knows what she's doing, so. And she There's got 12, 12 points for it. For. Yeah. Paige gets a just Four, three, straight 80. 12. I'm not going to question mm -mm. a decision by Paige but Pierce. But if Tanya 14 <laughs> the and Kyle, Tanya. she's going to be within two points. Let's see here. At least a, a 14. She got He's it. not even looking, so yeah, that must have been a no-brainer. 78. Points, 78, Tanya. Page doing what she needs to do. To and maybe Paige realizes, hey, I'm getting ready to finish on a 37-yard coyote. Tanya has to go right. to a 43-yard lynx. If I 12 the coyote, Tanya she shoots a 10. I still have my four-point yeah, lead four going into the final arrow. 16, so maybe Paige and thought Lexi the risk of missing that 14 17. could cost her the tournament. So she just said, right. hey, I'm comfortable aiming at that 12. Let's shoot at it. You can see her counting her marks right there. So between Jordan, Janet, and Lexi, yep, there she is. She's looking at her phone to say what I need to set myself. Site for and now she's dialing to that number to the tenth of a yard. If it says for, you know 37.3, she's setting that sight to 37.3 yards. That's crazy. She started shooting that new sidebar setup there made by O'Neill's classic right. archery, a wide yeah. bar we'll to get her minute. side rods no. out and away. Mm -hmm. it says that gives her good balance. Paige's mental game is what separates her from everybody. Yeah. She's so strong mentally. She does not get rattled. 12. Oh, just smoked it. I mean, just pounding them. There's a good look at Jordan. Oh. She's right on that upper. Oh, Tanya has yet to shoot. She may yep. have waited to see what Paige did to make her decision. Yeah, she got to go for that 14. She needs a 14 to tire. Long hold. Can she see it? 14 to tie. Oh, she went at she it. She missed it. Right. Darn. Eight, eight points. To to get to that Just last under. Hey, good shot, First Tanya Galantine. Yep. She's trying to win this thing. Absolutely. Back good back at 14. Right there. An eight Tanya, time. Tanya, I don't know exactly what it is. Up. That happens. She moves to 486. That's a good point. Eight I point. just always said Tanya. Me too. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> 486. For Jordan. Upper 12 was called. 
she's oh, putting wow. together Good a great round. Well 475. Well third place for her, but let's see what happens with Janet and Lexi. <laughs> she's been close to the shoot down in several tournaments this year. She'll be excited. She finally to cracked the code. She'll be excited to cash a contingency check. Yeah. 10 for Janet. 10, 10 for Janet. Janet. 468. Lexi, I believe she smashed this 14. <laughs> Good for her. We don't get to talk about money a lot, but I will say for Paige, if Paige wins this event, her bow manufacturer pays her $11,000 bonus just for shooting that bow. Now for Lexi? That is a 14 for Lexi Hull there. 14 for Lexi, 467. Yeah, and then she, if she wins, putting the cart before the horse. Yeah. And That's she's one of those double dippers like you talked about. She won 12. Shooter of the Year yeah. and That's wins the tournament. Big pay hit. 492, oh. yeah. Bowtech, yeah. Matthews, PSC, Elite, Tana. all these bow manufacturers are pouring money to these shooters to award them if they win or if they get on the podium. First, second, and third get, get contingency yeah. money. And it's big dollars. We don't get to talk about it enough. And, and the viewers don't get to see the checks, but it's serious cash. So, the cheer in there was for Alexi Hull, who's going to finish in fifth place. Janet Knight is going to finish in fourth place. I guess Jordan Deerman is going to finish in third, and it's just between Paige and Tanya, I believe. We'll get our scoreboard here. Yeah. With Paige having so a there six, it is. With Paige having a six-point lead, regardless of what Tanya does, if Paige can tend the last target, she will win this. Yeah. You know, 14 is in play. If Tanya gets a 14, that puts her at an even 500. So then Paige, if she shoots an eight, could, an eight. yeah, she could yeah. tire and beat her on bonus ring. So a yeah. 10 would, would completely lock it up, but an eight would also do it. So um, Paige's job's pretty easy. Tanya did put some good pressure on her, though. She did. And it's not over. I'm not nope. saying it's over. We shoot the last arrow for a reason, the last chance, last arrow. Last chance archery, last chance arrow. We'll get that right too. Gonna shoot the links. The 14's marked up good. Yeah, he moved. Looks like Scott Parrott moved them up in front of the line there. You can see where they were shooting from. So it's a little bit closer. So Jordan did finish in third, didn't she? Yep, she yep. did. It's just between Tanya and Paige. Hey, first shoot down, taking a podium? Guarantee it. That's awesome. Good for her. Yeah. She shot strong. Yep. Good strong shots. Good follow through. Where you wonder where you're at? Where you at? Like where you are. Tanya's going to be up first. And bonus rings. Page 492 and 25 bonus now she just shot at this target and missed two. the 14. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing, you know, you might think, oh, well, that's going to play in her head. I think it's actually going to play to her favor. Yeah, she's six points behind. She's. You know, second place is the worst she can finish. She doesn't even have to hit this target, and she's going to get second place. So I'd say because she can, she should shoot right at that 14. Yep. Paige still going to just need an 8 or a 10 to win. <sighs> just under Almost again. same spot. Yeah. Mm. Tanya's such a good shooter. Good weekend for her, yeah, finishing with absolutely. a 494. Just under it. So Paige needs two points to win. Hit the target. Hit the target. Right, Paige, you only have to do one thing, that's catch foam. <laughs> she still. Might as well shoot the 14, Paige. Absolutely. Yeah, if the, She's if a Bowtech shooter. Head, Tim Gillingham, also a Bowtech. You know he'd be telling her. That <laughs> hit that 14. Yeah. Give him a show. Chicken she's chicken, she so she's, she's chicken. gonna shoot. That means she's gonna probably lay up and shoot center ten right here. Center ten. <laughs> this is for six out of six. Six, out, yeah. Meaning, we're, if she, we're having fun, but if she hits this, this is serious business. Yeah, this for is her. serious business. Yeah. This is her. This is her livelihood. Double checking that sight mark. I wonder what she has to pay Tate for holding her umbrella for her. <laughs> he's surely charging her some fee. I think he's in charge of the money, so she just hands the checks oh, to him. Oh, interesting. I didn't know that. Center 10, Paige. Boink. There it is. 
<laughs> She's such a six for six. Such a good archer. Such a good sport. Paige has a great social media presence. She's very vocal about Absolutely. teaching people and, and sharing knowledge of what she does. Um, bravo, Paige Pierce. Yep. Yeah, she has no secrets to what she does. No. You want to know what she does? Ask her. No. She'll tell you. Congratulations, ladies. Great shooting. Thank you. And like I said, I, you know, I've been watching these archers. Man, nobody works harder than her. No. She will shoot dawn to dusk. Well, and if she feels like she has and to. she shoots so many different venues right. it takes a totally different bow setup to shoot some of these different archery games and she spends an insane amount of time preparing to shoot so and it's not like she's lucking into this there she is Paige Pierce we talked about it earlier six for six it's setting in now how's that feel Pretty good. I was panicked going into this one. I feel like maybe you could tell, and if you can, I think my hands <laughs> would still show you. Um, that was nerve-wracking. Paige, we were just talking about your work ethic, and you're such a dominant force in the archery games and the time and the devotion it takes for all the different setups. You know, you don't just shoot 3D. You don't just have one bow setup. You're spending an insane amount of time preparing for this, and you're getting duly rewarded for what you do. But just talk about how what the struggle is to chase all these different archery games. Truthfully, I think that's the biggest challenge in what I'm doing. You know, I didn't set out to specialize in one thing. I am doing it all. So, um, Obviously, I'm here at an ASA. The last weekend, I shot a FIDA with a completely different bow and arrows. And um, the weekend before that, I shot an NFAA field event, which was completely different in itself. So truthfully, this one kind of went on the back burner as far as practice. I usually just work hard for whatever's next. So we flew in on Monday, and I just ground it out this week, you know, trying to get as much practice in as I could before we started. I compliment you on your effort. I compliment you on your, e on your ability, and I love your mental game. Congratulations. You're doing awesome with this stuff. Thank you, guys. I really appreciate it. This was an amazing year. I'm not going to lie. That six for six was, like, really weighing on me out there. I just wanted to get that monkey off my back. <laughs> but we're so thankful to have this class and be out there competing. And we've seen so many different girls in the shoot down. It was just an honor to be out there with every single one of them. Congratulations, Congratulations Paige. 2023 ASA Classic Champ and Shooter of the Year Women's Known Pro. Thank you, guys. All right, folks, don't go anywhere. We will be right back here at the ASA Classic with our known pro division from Coleman, Alabama. Don't go anywhere. Referee, Mr. Ryan Reed, Chris Hacker, Alan Connor, Vinny Barger, and your number one qualifier from Voorheesville, New York, Jacob Sluzard. I thought I could hang with these guys and I wanted to prove that, but winning after five tournaments is it's just a lot. Vinny LaSelva explains why he shops at LancasterArchery.com. I'm a patient man in the woods, but when it comes to shopping online, not so much. That's why I choose Lancaster Archery Supply. They make it easy to order all my archery gear. With thousands of the newest and finest products right at your fingertips, ready to ship to your front door. Here's your order, Vinny. Or tree stand. Hey, depending on where you're hanging out, you might even get it before you get home. For all your archery needs, shop LancasterArchery.com. Sharon Wallet. Your first place qualifier, Jeff Rainey. Your number one qualifier, Miss Cara Kelly. Mr. Levi Morgan. That's Mr. McCarthy. Yeah. 
Elite is the world's most advanced and accurate archery experience. We challenge you to go to your local retailer and ask for Elite to demo the Omnia today. CBE, that's custom bow equipment. I'm talking about field tested, yeah. fully proven. Wow, what a match. Premium archery accessories. Check out the full line at custombowequipment.com. So at the start of the year, we were so excited that we finally got a women's known pro. And the coolest part about that for us initially was just getting a shoot down. We just found out right before this event that now we are actually going to be on the Sportsman's Channel, and I think that's super exciting. And I know since we got this class, I've had so many women and young girls reach out and say, like, we're so excited for this, and this gives us something to work toward, and, you know, hopefully we'll be shooting out there with you guys in the future. And so we just want to do it for all of them. Welcome back, everybody, to the ASA Classic in Coleman, Alabama, here at the beautiful St. Bernard's Prep uh, campus here. Darren Christianberry, known pro is our division, and that is a tight one. Run down that leaderboard. It is. Kyle Douglas came from behind to take shooter of the year. Garrett Ayersman was day one leader. He's now in second place with a 450. Kyle's obviously in first with a 454. Jeff Rainey, 450. Brady Hempen, 450. Louis Price at 442. So 12 points from top to bottom. But as you've seen with 12s and 14s in play, we won't know who wins this thing till we shoot the sixth and final arrow. Absolutely, Darren. And we're going to go back to Metropolis to watch how that this division played out there and you're going to see a familiar face at the end. The known pro shootdowns this year have been dogfights. At the four events that preceded Metropolis, two were right won by it. archers carrying the lead into the finals and two by someone else. Yep. Good. <laughs> Jimmy Lutz set the known pro 40 target record in Foley with a score of 60 up, but then finished the event in third. It's not gonna help his cause. It's in Metropolis, Jimmy broke his own 40 target record, posting a score of 66 up. But Brent Platt finished just two points behind him after setting the one day record with a score of 38 up on Saturday. He came out here and shot a 466 this weekend with a bow he's had less than a week. You know, there's Justin Hanna shot 460. That's previously the best score ever shot. And Brent Platt, 464. Yeah. 19 of 20 bonus rings today. That's a, that is a record for the one day. In the final shootdown, everyone was on fire. Of the 29 arrows shot, 15 hit the 14 ring and another five hit the 12 ring. Oh, obviously it works, look at that 14. 14. Four archers shot well enough to make the last chance archery last chance shot, and all four hit 14s. Got it. Great shot. Got it. He got it. He got it. Did you see how fast he was? <laughs> Lutz was one of them, and he made good on that record score by taking his first ever ASA known pro win. I, I, I was more nervous out there than I probably ever have been. That's um, awesome. It was, I finally got the monkey off my back and, and won one of these. I'm 
just super excited. And first shoot with Matthews, it was just perfect. You know, I was watching you draw back, and when that pin hit that 14 ring, you must have just said, it's time to go, and you smashed that thing. Yeah, I think Tim would call it a drive-by. Um, <laughs> it went way too quick for me to really know. But I you, just saw my pin on the mark. But what we call it is a win. Uh, yeah. That's yes. exactly <laughs> right. All right, we want to get to the action there. We saw Kyle Douglas in the finish there, and we're going to see him again here. But Nathan Brooks, let's bring out the archers and get this going. Known pro. Here we go, guys. Fifth place qualifier from Palmyra, New York, shooting for Hoyt, Louis Price. And your fourth place qualifier from Paducah, Kentucky, shooting for Hoyt, Brady Hempen. And in third place from Morgantown, West Virginia, shooting for Matthews, Garrett Ayersman. And your second place qualifier from Wichita, Kansas, shooting for Matthews, Jeff Rainey. And your first place qualifier is all the way from Liberty, Utah, shooting for Botech, Kyle Douglas. All right, Darren, there you go. Looking at Kyle Douglas, a 36 up today, meaning you, of 20 right. targets, he Remember, shot 18 12s and two tens. It's crazy. I bragged on the judges earlier about their skill set. It would be not fair for me to brag on the men and women in the known class and their skill set of being able to hit those rings because we see all these targets out here on this wide open field. It's bright, it's sunny, they're easy to see. Take these same targets and throw them in a big ravine with a great big canopy where the shadows and the sun are moving all the time. You can't see the target half the time. So the ability and the skill level to pick out those rings and hit them at the number of consistency and the, and the I mean, it's just, it's ridiculous. Yeah. So yeah. I, I brag on the judges, but I have to brag on the known shooters. Yeah. It's a it's a whole Start different skill set, yeah. and it's impressive to see some of the scores that are coming off these ranges. Louis Price got in. There were a couple archers uh, who came in at a 442, but he won on bonus rings the right to be in here. Nice. Just how stacked that class is. He came out firing at that 14, and I believe he is about a tick or so short. These guys will go crazy. Yep. I see at least one 14. I see two 14s Kyle's at gonna, least. Kyle's going to put a 12 on his scorecard, it looks like. Yep. All right, upper 12 was We're going to have to do some math here, PJ. <laughs> and he got the 12. Congratulations, our leader. There you go. 466 for Mr. Kyle Douglas. So Kyle came into this weekend. He was eight points behind Jimmy Lutz for Shooter of the Year. He did not have a good day yesterday. Jimmy gained some ground. And so today he was like, I, I, I just had to go for everything. And he hit 18 out of 20 today. 18 out of 20. If you don't understand that, it's ridiculous. <laughs> he said it was one of those days. If you've shot especially 3D. There are those days where you shoot perfectly, but you just miss. They're just out of that bonus ring because you can't see the bonus rings half the time. Right. But he said today was one of those days where everything was inside. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, Jimmy didn't go to the world championship in Germany this week yep. because of this event. So that's an eight there for Jeff Rainey. Those guys will not be happy with those arrows in the eight ring. Uh, that was the 49-yard hyena yeah. Jeff was shooting at, the longest one. But now we're going to go over here to Brady Hempen and it's on this all dead. Yeah, it's obviously not easy what they're doing because they know the distance and it's, they still slip up and shoot eights. It's easy to do. It's very easy to do. It's frustrating for these guys because Kyle, Kyle won't miss many rings. So now they're going to have to go after rings hard. If you give some points back, you're going to have to go get them. Wow, that is. 
is close. So 14. close. He got it. Brady Empen. So 464. That's going to help him a bunch, but everybody's going to have to get that 14 on that all day because it's only 28 yards. Yep. Louis shot at the 14 on that Coyote. He's 37. 37 eight. yards, yes, sir. Right, so we should mention, as stacked as this class is, one of the ball. things is that there's like 30 some guys who could probably, who could be out here every week. Yeah. So, case in point, this is our last event. Brady Hempen, Garrett Ayersman, and Louis Price. This is their first shoot off of the year. Wow. The, po the talent pool in that class is very deep. Deep. All right, so Kyle, 466, Brady Hempen, two behind him at 64, mm -hmm. Jeff Rainey and Garrett, 458, and Louis at a 450. You could see Jeff Rainey reach down and move that orange cone out in front of his box. Kyle Douglas has as well, so that means they're calling for the upper right, 12. That's how we designate that. Two, and, and here we are at that three split screen. I don't know what we call that, the tri-view. Uh, tri-view, yeah. I like that. Wow, tri-view, <laughs> I like it. You got Louis Price, Kyle Douglas, and Jeff Rainey left mm -hmm. to right. Kyle and Jeff are calling upper 12, so you may see them hit that ring up there about 10 o'clock in the 10 ring, 11 o'clock area. Jeff went at the, oh, 14. We went at the 14. Kyle oh. shot just wow. right, and Louis shot a 10. That's rare. Jeff shot at the 14 on that 49 yeah. yard hyena. That's yeah. pretty, that's a brave shot. Good for him. Yes, yeah, a first up. Louis We're going to have Louis yeah. Price with a 10. Moves him to 460. Next up for our leader, Kyle Douglas. Now only so I'm wondering, Darren. Two points ahead of let's get this call first. 10 for Kyle. That's a 10 for Kyle. Okay. 476. I'm wondering, you know, they're using fibers in their sights, mm -hmm. and these targets are lit oh, up. Yeah. I'm wondering if it's kind of blowing out their pins or causing starburst. Jeff. Eight and let's see for Jeff. That that's that's rare for Jeff Rainey. Did I, who did I miss? Did I miss somebody's? Uh, no, we got Garrett and Brady left. So. Eight. An eight for Garrett right, Ayersman on that. Oh, Dad. 466, if my math's correct. Rainey shot an 8, 466. I guess they got Rainey and Ayersman in different spots. So a 12 for Brady. Brady right? Hempen takes a 12. So he's now tied for first. He is. Brady Hempen told me in Kentucky a couple weeks ago that if he wins a known pro division to get the monkey off his back, he's going to go to open pro and judge because he loves judging. He ah. loves he so loves the guesswork of judging. Now, whether he will or not, I don't know. But <laughs> if he can hang on to this win, we're going to see if he's a man of his word or not. Uh. <laughs> young kid, talented he, yep, He's kid. one of those young guys who shoots all the time. Great shot. Just trying to break through. Yeah. Kyle Douglas is calling for an upper 12. Brady's calling for an upper 12. And Rainey's calling for an upper 12. You know, Kyle Douglas, as good as he is at all the different games, it took him a little while to win his first one, too, mm -hmm. here. And when he opened the floodgates. <laughs> Watch out. Shooter of the year. That's shot at the 14 there, that deer. Jeff Rainey Wait, got it's the gonna 14 be close. Oh, yeah. Rainey right. got the 14 on the odd dead. So upper 12 for Louie. On the links. What'd he get? Good solid shot. They're looking hard at it. Yeah. Naked eye looks a little low. Oh, yep. I think it is. I think it's just under. Scott Parrott gives us the score it's for a 10. 10. 470. Still a good score, but it leaves some room for everybody else. Now we're coming over to. There's Brady, strapping numbers. young man. Next up, Lewis Price. Louis Price here. I it looked good, but I couldn't see the right side of his arrow. Oh. It's close. And Lewis Eight. Lewis uh, just out. So that was Brady. I, I'm a train wreck on this scorekeeping right now. 
The first one was Brady, yeah. Kyle Douglas currently tied for the lead, but ahead on bonus rings by three. Just saw Brady take a ten. Okay, Kyle Douglas. Now I'm calling so it ten. Ten for Kyle. Kyle does enjoy that bonus ring lead. Four eighty six. Sorry for the confusion. Next up, Jeff Rainey. Jeff Rainey Listen says, I'm going to shoot at 14, and I'm going to smoke it at 28 yards. Should move him to 480. Bingo. There's a way to get out of it quickly. Yep. 480 Rainey. is what I have as well. Six points of our so and Garrett needs a Garrett. 14 to and tie him. Based on tradition, we'll take a 14 here also probably. He got Man, it. Mike Tyrell called it already. Yeah, 480. So we're still bunched up in there. Kyle Douglas at 86. Brady Hempen at 86. Garrett and Rainey at 80. And Louis Price at 68. Am I right? Yes. There you go. I agree with the guys in the truck. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm a I'm a terrible guy at math here, but I'm we're getting sorted out. The guys in the truck are keeping me straight. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so there's Kyle looking down the binoculars at the closest target on the field. If he does not right, shoot a 14, we'll I on may on fall on the floor at that distance. If he does not shoot at a 14, let me say that. Let's see what Brady's going to do on this deer now I believe right yeah he's shooting a back tension release you can see him pulling and pulling and pulling oh he shot up for 12 he did he called it and there's a 14 aimed at oh that got right. it that Garrett is that's Garrett Rainey. Ayersman 14, right? is that Rainey that's or Ayersman? Ayersman oh Air gotcha Ayersman oh he, oh, he missed just under he missed it so Garrett 488 yeah, that links is 43 yards. That's no easy. That's a 50 cent piece down there at 43 yards. It's not easy to hit. Brady's going to take this 12 here. Yes, he is. Brady, 12, 498. Lewis Price. Kyle smashed the 14. I can see that already. But first up, we have Louis Price. Eight takes an eight. Four, seven, six. And next for Kyle Douglas. Needs a 12 to stay, to stay tied for the lead. Yeah, he's going to take Hunter. a two-point lead here is Kyle Douglas. You talk about mind games or mind control. This guy right here has got it. Money. 14 for Does Kyle not five hundred five hundred point lead. No, such a strong mind, such a good mental game. We asked one of his friends, have you ever seen Kyle get mad? And he said, I heard him say darn once. <laughs> so that's about it. And there's a 14 for Jeff Rainey, 494. So here we are, Kyle Douglas on our lap fifth inning. All right, there we go. That's a pretty good race. 500. Yes, and then 98 for Brady Hempen, 94 for Rainey. 88 for Garrett, 76 for Louie. So Brady's still within two. Brady's yeah. going to the long target. Uh, He's yeah. going to the hyena. He is. And Kyle's probably going to 14 that coyote. Yeah. He's at that coyote with Tim Gillingham holding his umbrella. He's telling him, yeah. shoot to 14, shoot Brady, to 14. Brady's probably not going to risk a 14 on this 49-yard hyena, so no. I'm going to say he's going to probably shoot at the upper 12. We'll but if Kyle shoots a 14 on this coyote, he's almost going to put this tournament out of reach. You need the 12 right here, kid. He's pull, 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 and that shot's going to break. Keep pulling. Boom. Got it. Oh, got what it. What a good shot. 49 yards. And he went at oh, the upper. Kyle okay. went at the upper. Okay. All right. Kyle's going to – that's okay, – the, they're, they're matching each other right yeah. now. I like Jeff. it. I guess I have to Eight. fall out of my chair because I said if Kyle wasn't going to shoot at the 14. Jeff Rainey. That Rainey surprises shot me. Eight. So 502 for Jeff. Him at 502. Garrett Ayersman, 496, 496 with an 8. Brady Hempen, here we go. So Br Brady and Kyle are going to kick some guys out of the sixth there yep. with as good as they shot. 
12, 49 yards. Smoked it. Now we got Louis Price here. This one's close Price. on that 14. I can't tell. I think he's got it Does he pull the key by a quick glance at the TV screen, but I can't and confirm until now. Yes. Oh, yeah. He got it. There we go. 490. So he's going to finish in fifth. Yep. Garrett's going to finish in fourth. Kyle called upper on this. Yep. And he got it. Okay. 512. So we have Kyle Douglas at okay. So Rainey is with still within ten. Yep. So he's gonna st he's gonna shoot first at a five oh two. Then Brady's gonna shoot second with the five ten, and Kyle gets to see what he needs to do to win with a five twelve. Yep. Louis Price is gonna finish in fifth. Garrett Ayersman is gonna finish in fourth at four ninety six. And then, as you mentioned, we've got Brady, Jeff, and Kyle mm -hmm. to shoot. Oh, this will be interesting what they said here. Yeah. And there's no, there's no rhyme or reason. There's no rule. The tournament director just says, okay, we're going to shoot this target. We're going to shoot this target, and we're going to shoot it from here. Looks like they're going to the coyote. Give them a small target and back them up. Yeah. Back them up into the stands. Well, they won't do that, but. As good as It'd these nice. guys are shooting in the one-day scores, it might be time to back them up to 60-yard max instead of 50-yard max. So we have heard that, uh, Darren Christianberry, folks saying, you need to move the known pro folks back. I feel pretty confident. Kyle Douglas, Jimmy Lutz, archers like that, 60, 70 yards, they're still going to hit they it. They would. They <laughs> would. And I think and, and the reason, and Nathan Brooks is over here talking to us too, and the reason they don't, is a lot of these uh, venues yeah, where we shoot, right. they have to cut lanes. Yeah, exactly. And if you have to cut 200 lanes an extra 10 yards, ugh, <laughs> yeah. and you don't have like a, a, a skid steer with one of those yeah. mulchers on it, if you're doing those lanes by hand, it's a lot That's of manual lot of labor. So yeah. going from a 50-yard max range to a 60-yard max range. Here we go. Jeff oh, Rain up. is up. Oh, they're shooting very diagonally across the field. At the Coyote. He got, got it. Got it. Yep, he's clipping that line. Puts him at a five. Oh, yeah. He got five it. Five sixteen. So he's now leading Kyle Douglas by four points and leading Brady Hempen by six. So they should overtake. There it is. They should overtake Jeff. It Scott Parrott holds up the 14, just to verify. Yep, great shot by Jeff. He'll at least get third place. Here we go, Brady Hempen. So if Brady shoots an eight, he's at 518. If Brady shoots a five, he will slip into third place. But he needs to 14 this yeah. to put some pressure on Kyle. Big arrow, kid. He's got some podiums. Besides first place, so I, I would think he's going to go for that 14. Yeah, I think he will too. Smoked Smashed it. it. Yeah. Smoked it. That's the way to do it. Five twenty-four. So now a 12 to tie, 14 to win. 14 to win. And Kyle has, Kyle has him on bonus string, so he if a 12 he'll win. Hmm. Even though he ties, he will win on bonus rings. He is having a discussion right now with Tim Gillingham about all that. But he's loading that era. Uh, he's got his mind made up, whatever he's doing. Yeah, he needs Again, a ring. he would be another one, shooter of the year and classic champ on the line. That's yeah. a big, big payday That's, at stake yeah. here. Double dipping at the classic is uh, healthy for your bank account. Look at him. His expression, Just you never know face. if Kyle's shooting good or bad. Nope. He's got the same expression, and he is serious about it. Steady as a rock. Oh, got I think it. he got it. He did. That's going to be game over right there. I believe it is. Wow, good shooting Brady Hempen, but Kyle Douglas is a beast. Yeah, that's <laughs> 
There it is, 14. 526. Yes. So Jeff Rainey third, Brady Hempen second, Kyle Douglas is our known pro champion. To add to Shooter of the Year. Mm. There's got to be a high five here coming with Tim. <laughs> yeah, there we go. All right. There's no way that wasn't happening. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> what a great day for Kyle Douglas. Yeah, big day. I mean, and like you said, he said today is one of those days that you dream about because yeah. just nothing went wrong. So he went 12, 10, 10, 14, 12, 14. That's crazy. Here he comes. He is getting the headset on there. And there he is, Kyle Douglas. We talked earlier. You said this was one of those dream days. You finished it out. <laughs> yeah, I was able to close it off. You know, today was just out on the course today. It's just one of those days where everything just goes right, you know. You just kind of get your pin somewhere in the vicinity of the 12, and it seems to just go in. So, you know, it didn't quite happen out here in the shoot-off. I missed a few I wish it would have hit, but still was able to seal the deal. Yeah, Kyle, you hung on strong there. I had you down at 12, 10, 10, 14, 12, and then 14, the last arrow. And the ideal situation or the ideal outcome at the Classic is to win shooter of the year and win the Classic. We call it double <laughs> dipping. That's got to feel pretty good. Yeah, it does. It feels <laughs> awesome. You know, it just everything went my way this weekend, and, you know, it, just one of those days. Congratulations on a great weekend. Congratulations on Shooter of the Year, buddy. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. All right. Congratulations to Kyle Douglas, who is our known pro ASA Classic champ and Shooter of the Year. Folks, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with our judging classes. We're going to have Women's Pro up next. Ryan Jeffries, Mr. Ryan Reed, Chris Hacker, Alan Connor, Benny Barger, and your number one qualifier from Voorheesville, New York, Jacob Sluzard. I thought I could hang with these guys, and I wanted to prove that, but winning after five tournaments, is, it's just a lot. Elite is the world's most advanced and accurate archery experience. We challenge you to go to your local retailer and ask for Elite to demo the Omnia today. CBE, that's custom bow equipment. I'm talking about field tested, yeah. fully proven. Wow, what a match. Premium archery accessories. Check out the full line at custombowequipment.com. What a shot. Got it. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> so Kyle needs an eight to win. Eight to win. Oh, he went right at it. Enter 10. Done. This guy is unreal. That's it. And he got it. Never played it safe killing hands. The number one qualifier in the women's shootdown, Sharon Wallace. Your first place qualifier, Jeff Rainey. 
your number one qualifier, Miss Cara Kelly. Mr. Levi Morgan. That's Mr. McCarthy. Who'd she hit? I can't. She hit Aaron. Okay. Dude, mm. that's gotta be a ten. I can't. Yeah, not only the targets are dark, but yeah. yard is judging in particular, trying to judge the distance. It's kind of difficult in the morning. And making good decisions when you're tired. All right, welcome back everyone to the ASA Classic here in Coleman, Alabama. Women's Pro is our class up next. Darren Christianberry run through that leaderboard. Yeah, Kaylee, back from her first child being born. She's missed a lot of this year because she had a baby. Um, came back in, never missed a beat. 408, leading Darren, the back. Before you move on, that 408 includes a miss, a zero. Oh my gosh, I didn't know that. Leading the pack with a miss. Wow, so 39 targets while everybody else shot 40. Kaylee has a two point lead over Emily McCarthy. Uh, Cara Kelly is in third. She is the shooter of the year. She's at a 404. Aaron McGlattery from Canada at a 402. And Lindsay, Lindsay Christensen making an appearance in another shoot down at a 394. Well, Darren, uh, we should set the stage for this. This is a judging class, so mm -hmm. this is different. They're now going to be guessing the distances to the target. Yes, yeah, they, we've changed the field. Uh, no range finders allowed. The last two classes are the open pro and the men's pro, and they go back to guessing the distance. They're out there judging right now, as you can see on your screen. They're estimating the distance to the target. They're trying to figure out the best game plan to maximize the points on these next five or six targets. And again, we're going to shoot six more arrows apiece, hopefully, and see who comes out on top of these next two classes. Well, while they are out there judging, we're going to go back to Metropolis, Illinois, to see how women's pro finish there. In women's pro, Sharon Wallace, who has many, many wins in this division, entered the shootdown with a slim three-point lead over Aaron McLattery, who had several ASA podium finishes, but no wins. From Marsden, Saskatchewan is Aaron McGlattery. The two matched each other shot for shot through two ends, but on the third, Sharon shot an eight while Aaron smashed a 12 to take a one point lead. Now she has moved into first place. Look at this, Nathan. They matched each other again on the fourth arrow, but Aaron hit a 12 with her fifth shot to Sharon's 10, adding two more points to her lead. Oh, and she smoked yep, that she upper, called up and there. she called it. On the sixth and final arrow, Sharon shot an eight, meaning Aaron needed to hit an eight or better to collect her first ASA win, and she center punched the 10 ring. Yeah, it feels awesome. I had a really good day right from the start. Um, I changed my game plan a little bit this weekend. I decided I'm sick of hitting just below the uppers. I'm gonna aim really aggressive all weekend and just see what happens. I've been judging good enough. I figured to try that game plan and it worked out. All right, Darren, so as you see there, they are judging their distance. 
Hey, let's talk a little bit about that. This is an open field. How are they gauging the distance to those targets? Most, I won't say most. I, I can't say who and how many, but I know for me, when I practice, the only common denominator anywhere we go is the size of the animal. We shoot the same animals at every single event. The paint schemes might change just a little bit, but the body size never changes. The size of the rings never changes on each animal. So I do it by body size, depth perception. Some of them may look at the ground. They may look and try to find 10 yards. They may try to find 20. They may work their way to the target. They may just you know, try to find halfway and flip it. There's several different ways you can estimate the distance. You have to find a method that is consistent for getting points on your scorecard for yourself and then utilize that method to try to win a tournament. Yeah, and I mean, practice, practice, practice. It, it literally is. It's a learned skill. I mean, there are people that have really good depth perception. They have an eye for it. Dan McCarthy, Levi Morgan, all these ladies. We see all these ladies consistently in the shoot-off, so they're very consistent and very good at picking that distance. And that's half the battle. You not only have to judge it correctly, then you go to set your sights. You have to trust yourself. Hey, did I make the right decision? Am I aiming at the upper? Am I aiming hard at the lower? Do I pad at a yard? There's a whole bunch of different scenarios to try to be successful at guessing the distance. And when you're guessing, Two wrongs can make a right. If you misjudge the distance and you make a marginal shot, good things can happen. Yeah. Where in the known classes, when they have a range finder, if they know the exact distance and they make a marginal shot, they're probably not going to hit the ring. Where when you're judging and guessing, you have the luxury of two wrongs can make a right. Well, I can tell you that's one of the things I love about the unknown game because I often have marginal shots, and so I look for those bonuses when it actually helps me. Yeah, and I'm an old-school <laughs> shooter. I've been shooting ASA for a lot of years, and the upper 12 wasn't a thing. It, it just wasn't. You shot at the lower 12 only, and if you had a group of four or five people, by the time you get the fifth shooter up on a short target, there's no room left. So you go now, you can call that upper 12. I still have yet to figure out a great game plan. I know Keith Alstrom, we watched him earlier win the senior pro division. He says from the beginning, guys, I'm shooting all uppers today. Oh, yeah. I'm not going to call each start. I'm just shooting all uppers. I don't. I mean, I get to a links. I typically shoot the upper. There's not much margin for error under the lower, so I typically shoot an upper there. Black Panther's another target. I always shoot an upper. But a lot of these other animals, I want to shoot at the lower because I'm just more comfortable aiming there. My mind is comfortable seeing my pin down at that low 12. But now that we have the option, it can change. Do I add a yard aim center? Do I cut a yard aim hard at the upper? Do I add one? There's, again, so many scenarios to be successful out here. You have to determine and practice what works best for you and then take it to the tournament and see if it works well. We should mention that we were discussing yardage is different, and this delay here, part of this delay, is that they moved all the targets. Yep. So all those numbers I mentioned earlier, out the window. Yep. They moved the targets just for these last two divisions because they are going to have to judge them. And we don't know the distance. And I, I don't know yeah, now. <laughs> I would, if I was out there, I would walk over probably to the medium deer. That's probably the target of all those out there that I judge the best, and that's probably going to be the one that I want to calibrate myself on. Uh, I'm going to okay. look at it and then try to say, okay, I think it's whatever. Yeah. You know, well, then I'll go down the line and I'll write down the number for each one. And then I want to come back and compare. Okay, if I think that deer is, let's just say, if I think that deer's 48, and then I look at that Audad, could it be four yards closer? You know, or is it just two yards closer? Because if my spread is six and I think, oh, it's only two yards closer, I may have missed something somewhere. So we give these shooters a 10 minute judging period to go back, check their numbers double check their numbers. They write them down on a card because you don't have time to judge it and set your sight right. and do all these things. So we give them this judging period to try to get everything the best they can and then try to get the best score they can get. Yeah, they only get one minute when they're on the shooting line mm -hmm. versus when they're out there in the woods. It's a little bit longer. They can step up to the stake. You know, they're shooting single file so they can take some time, look at it. You don't have the time to do that no, here. No, no. And it's it, the sun, bright sunlight. You know, these targets look as big as a house. So sometimes I think they actually may be farther than what they actually are. And then when we're shooting in the woods and they're dark, they actually look longer than what they yeah. actually are. So learning to judge in these different canopies, different scenarios, again, it's a, it's a very, very good skill set.
All right, Darren. Well, our judging period is over now, so we're going to go to Nathan Brooks, and he is going to bring out our women's pro division. Next up will be the women's pro division. Your fifth place qualifier from Weston, Idaho, shooting for prime, Lindsey Christensen. In fourth place from Marsden, Saskatchewan, shooting for Hoyt, Aaron McGlattery. And your third place qualifier from up here, Michigan, shooting for Matthews, Cara Kelly. And in second place from Wazika, Wisconsin, shooting from Matthews, Emily McCarthy. And your number one qualifier from Dublin, Georgia, shooting from Matthews, Kaylee Pettifer. All right, Darren, there we see Kaylee Pettifer coming out there. As we mentioned, she took several right. tournaments off mm -hmm. while she had a baby, and she comes back at her first Hello. event, Kaylee's missed the target, and still leads the class. I didn't know that. I'm still looking at the scores here. She's at 408. If she would attend that target, she'd had a 12-point lead over Emily. Would have been 18 up. She would have been like... I mean, that's that's really yeah. impressive. I hate that she missed that target, but for her to overcome that and still be leading coming in here, bravo. She she was at minus four today wow. for the weekend and got back to 408. I shot that same range. I was not that fortunate. <laughs> There's a good look at Erin McGladdery. She won the last ASA. Erin's yeah. got a good, good archery game. She's a strong yardage judger. She's shooting a hinge release. She'll pull through, and that thing will break in just a second. Boom. Oh, smash the upper. And, and she, she called she it. She calls upper 12s. There's a 10 for Lindsey Christensen. This should be a really good race. Yep. There's Kaylee shooting. A, it's a 10. Good I believe 10. she's just over it. Yep, yep, she's just over the 12 there. So she's going to go to 418. Back to doing the math. Okay, first up for our leader, Kaylee. We have a 10. Next up is Emily on the deer. It's in a good spot. Mm -hmm. Emily's got a strong shot. She got a 12. She got the 12. That's awesome. All right. Four and so they're tied. I tell Emily all the time, she's got it, and she does. She's got a strong shot. She's a good yardage judger, and I think she might doubt herself just a little bit at times, but... Emily, there's no need to. You got it, kid. 12 for Cara, 12 Kelly. For Cara Kelly, who is our shooter of the year in this division. It is her eighth shooter of the year. 416 now for her. Air McLattery, everybody's favorite Canadian. And another 12. 12 That's awesome. Well, 414. All right. That's good archery. Here. I like good archery. Yeah. They're doing it right now. For Lindsay. Lindsay, I believe she got a. Yep, center 10. 10. 10. Right, Not wrong with that on that coyote. Nope. Back. 4 -0 -4. 4 -0 -4. That's a Lindsay good start for yep. several of them. So we swapped the hyena, which was our farthest, mm -hmm. is now our closest. So, yeah, we've moved positions pretty good on these targets. And I think what that does, PJ, those ladies that stepped up there and popped that 12 right off the bat, now they're like, okay, my numbers are good. Yeah. So now it's game on. You know, they've spent 10 minutes out there judging and looking. First arrow is what All they're right, calibrating ladies. themselves we'll on. And now that they've pounded yeah. that 12, they're like, okay, my numbers are right. There's a good look at Cara. Cara's so consistent. IBO, ASA, yep. doesn't matter. She's a good shooter. There's she, Emily. Strong shot. She's got such a good shot. There's a good look at Kara rotating through that hinge. 
ASA Shooter of the Year and IBO National Triple Crown winner is Cara this oh, year. I think she got that 12 too. <laughs> That's why she's so hard to beat. She 12s a lot of them. This is Three looking just Lindsay. a little bit tall. Yeah. She got an eight. An eight for Lindsay Christensen. Four 12. Kaylee, our co-leader. Is it 10? Looking for that 428. Emily McCarthy coming off of a 12. Emily McCarthy is interesting. I always say when she gets into the shoot Shooter down, man, she just hits a different range. gear. Yeah. And 10. 10. I would not she want her chasing me down. No, she's just left of that, so her yardage estimation was perfect. She hit great height just left. 428. She's tied with right, Kaylee. And then she's going to be tied. Back to back. 428 now. What Aaron do? Aaron had to shoot that long coyote. She calls up her. Boy, that looks good. I mean, are you kidding me? Scott's not even looking at it. Yeah. Smokes. Way to go, girl. She must have crushed it. 426. This is a race. This is a race. Three 428s. Aaron at 426. And Lindsay at 412. Wow. 12 10. So basically, 12 12. This is a foot race. Four shooters all within 12 12. They've shot more 12s than they have 10 so far. <laughs> That's awesome. All right. So we're going to let Aaron let me know when she's ready. She has called the upper There's our tri view. Is that what we agreed to call it, Darren? I don't know the if that's the view. official name, but I kind of like it, the I tri like view. It. There we go. So we got Aaron McLattery on the left, Lindsey Christensen in the center, and Kaylee Pettifer on the right. So you're going to see them draw, shoot, and we'll where they hit. Now. Aaron always calls upper, so she's going to shoot the upper on the links. I think Lindsey's a lower shooter. And Kaylee typically shoots uppers. She got oh, the upper. Got it. Oh, Aaron may have shot an eight yeah, right there. She just missed. And there's Cara. And there's Cara. Golly. Got it. She's so tough. Got it. So tough. <laughs> she wants this one, I Guarantee think. It. All right, she wants to get the shooter of the year in classic champ. She wants to double dip. <laughs> here we go for Aaron. She did eight get an eight. Aaron. 434. All right, she had up. a lot of momentum going into that target, yep. too. For Lindsay. Yep, shaking her head on yep. that one. There's a 10 for Lindsay. 422. 10 for Lindsay. So this Next up, we have Kaylee. Kaylee. And yep. I think she got this one, if I remember correctly. For Haley, we have a 10. Oh, she must oh, not have called. Nope, did. nope. There it is. There, yeah. I was going to say. 12. Yep. Yep. There called you go. the upper. Oh, I was going to say she typically does. 440 oh, now with that 12. <laughs> <laughs> All right, 12. Here's Emily. Let's see what happens now. With she did not call upper Emily. on this. Just a 10. 10 for Emily. Yep. Okay. Nothing wrong with that. 438. And Carr, I believe we know, smashed this one. She's came in third, third and she's now tied yeah. for the lead. 12, wow. for Cara, that's three or over her. <laughs> 12, 12, 12 for Carr Kelly in the shoot down. That tells, at you, unknown that distance. tells you how good of a yardage Lawrence estimator she up. is. Emily's at 428. Yeah. Aaron's at 434. And Lindsay's at 422. Got two at 440, one at 438, one at 434, <laughs> and one at 420. All right. Here we go. There's Carr Kelly and in. Kaylee tied at 448. Good Emily looks Emily. determined. Yeah. 438. Aaron in shuffle. fourth place at 34, classic and Lindsay at 422. You can see her staring that target down. She's, She's looking at the detail, shaking her head, trying to see, you know, is there something different yeah, I'm missing here? Those. Am I 100% right? Okay, I see something. Let's give it a little bit more yardage. Now she's going to hook up and figure out where to aim. 
She's going at that coyote. She, she shoots a tension release. You'll see her thumb come off the peg right there. Now she's going to rotate, pull, 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 and this thing's going to break. Boom. Good 10. Center 10. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Oh, here's a left shot. Who's that? That's Cara. Cara, she got the 10, I believe. Man, she's hoping that. I wonder if she line. called upper. That's not like her to miss that far no. high left. I bet she shot at the upper. There's a good look over Aaron's shoulder. Pulling nice she's got and strong. 25 seconds on the clock. Oh, oh, she's oh, left. Also oh, left. Interesting. Two and four. Also left. Hmm. Leader right now, yeah. leader. Well, I want to see, see this Kara arrow because it's close math, to that see line. See what this math does. There's Kara. Shot looked clean. Oh, oh wow. Oh, she got just it. got it. 10 points, 450. And now for Aaron McGlattery. So what we saw there, Darren, was these lines are pliable. They yeah. are not perfect. They've got air bubbles. They've got everything. Yeah, you can see. Look how distorted that line yeah. is right there. It's uh, We get one view with the camera. The the guys calling the arrows get a look above it and below above it. So below. I know yeah. sometimes on camera it looks like, ah, that could be out. But right, it's have. they have a way better view than we do. Yeah. And Scott Parrott has said he needs clear evidence it's out or Eight. it's in. Yep. So if he looks at one angle of three and, and it's in, then it's in. You're right. 442 for Aaron, 430 for Lindsay. 10 for Kaylee, leaves her in a tie with Emily. 450, so Emily is tied with. And for Emily. Kara at 450. Kaylee and Kara stay tied. Okay. So 448 right. now for Emily. Yep. All right, still a race. Yep. I think we got two at 450. And, yep. our final arrow. and then we have and Emily at 448. Right Correct. And, Kara and then 450. Aaron's Aaron at 442. Yep. And Lindsay's at 430. Yep. 430 is Bingo. We got it right. After this arrow, we'll determine who Target number, or yeah, arrow, arrow number five. Target number Here five, we go. arrow this number five. So and it's coming down so to the wire. There's Kaylee. Good deep breath. I think Kaylee shoots a thumb trigger. You'll see her get her thumb wrapped around there. And she has to keep pulling with her thumb on that trigger to get it to fire. A lot of people shoot a tension release. Right, You'll Emily. see their thumb Let's come off the peg and they rotate. Now. You'll see her yep, come back to full is. draw, then wrap her thumb around that thumb peg. Boom. And now she'll start pulling through. Boom. Good 10. Yep, that's that small coyote. There's Kara. So steady. Look at that. Get it, girl. Nothing moving. Good 10. Emily's shot explodes when it fires. She's got good tension, yeah. Good 10. Center 10 there for Emily. Okay. Don't think we had much movement on this okay, line. First up. Fifth arrow. Emily McCarthy. This is Emily. 10 for Emily. 448. Puts her at 458. And will definitely be in the final arrow So that puts her at 58. Is that correct? Kelly. 58, Kelly I'm sorry. My, Car Kelly. my bad, Matt. So that's going to be a decision. That's 10 for Cara. Curve moves her to 460. 460. Did 460. Aaron, 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 she must have shot the 14 on this hyena, and it's really oh, tall. Oh, yeah. Let's see if she's found one here. This is going to be a five. Doggone it. Yep. Five for Aaron. Well, I hate that's that for her. 447. That'll take her out of the final arrow. Lindsay Christian. This is Lindsay. There it is. There we go. <laughs> 14. Got Good it. shot. 444. Nice so for she's going to finish in fifth. Yep. Aaron's going to finish in fourth. Kaylee shot a 10 on this, I believe. Kaylee yeah. shot a 10, 460. So, All right. we got Emily shooting first with a 458. Then Kara shooting second at a 460. And because of the number of bonus rings that Kaylee has and her and Kara are tied, Kaylee will get the last arrow. All right. So, yep, we're going to pick a target. We're going to. Scott Parrott's going to so move the line the somewhere, and then they will get a couple minutes to judge. The odd oh, dad has a big target. 14, so they're going to like that. Yep. Yeah, as soon as he... Right, yeah, you can see 
all the folding and lines there mm -hmm. in that target just from the imperfections in the foam uh, you know this is not like your typical bullseye paper target where the lines are crisp and clean um, so all it has to do all it has to do is just touch yep. any part of that line that's a great look at it right there. Yeah. yeah. It, that foam is, if you push on it, your finger will sink in it. It's yeah. pliable. So when those arrows touch the target and penetrate, they suck that foam deeper in as the arrow penetrates the target. So you can stretch that line. So we say pull the line. That is a term that we use. But the scoring ring has to touch the arrow. You can't yes. just pull the line. Yeah. Oh, you magically get the higher score. It has to touch. It has to touch. Yes, sir. Yeah. That's one of the issues and so that's where we see you know the ladies uh shoot a lower they have a lower speed restriction here 280 feet per second mm -hmm. is the max their arrow speed they can have which is 10 feet per second less than the men yep um and so they tend to shoot lighter arrows our next division we're going to see levi morgan shoots a big heavy arrow and one of the benefits of that is that line pulling yep he goes in that target the line follows. Less wind drift, less wind drift in the open field, and they penetrate deep and they pull that line. Carbon arrows are more like they have more, I won't say abrasive, but they're a tackier finish yeah. in most cases. There are some manufacturers that have like a slick coat on them um, for penetration for maybe in a hunting scenario. But the old aluminum arrows, they go in pretty easy, they come out mm -hmm. pretty easy. But these carbon arrows grab when they penetrate that foam, and you have a that's why you see people shooting a, a bigger diameter arrow fatter arrow to catch the line and also pull more foam into where you might have a chance to to touch that higher scoring value yeah we saw tanya galantine earlier shooting super skinny mm -hmm. arrows compared to some of these ladies it can go up to 27 64th diameter that's the largest arrow allowed in asa competition a lot of them shoot 23s especially in this class yep you can, that's a little more common because then that 27, hard to control. Yep. Harder to control. Harder to control, yeah. And draw length. You know, Aaron's, gosh, Aaron's, what, 5'10"? She's tall. Yeah. She's got probably a 29-inch draw length. She's shooting an Easton Super Drive 25 with probably some pretty good point weight because she's a longer draw. The power stroke of her bow is launching that arrow faster so she can build a heavier arrow. A lot yeah. of benefits to a heavier arrow out there. Yeah, compared to... Someone like Cara or Lindsay yep. who are just smaller, yep. shorter, yep. shorter, draw length's not going to be as long. Shorter draw length have to shoot a lighter weight arrow to get to that 280 foot per second threshold. So they have they have more limitations than what, you know, Aaron does at 29 plus inches. And that speed restriction is there to level the playing field. Yes. So that someone, because we have some ladies out here who are like 25 and a half yep. inch draw length, they would be at a serious disadvantage. Yeah. Here we go with Emily. She's up first. She's at a 58. She's going to need a bonus ring here. Holding the, yeah, I was I say, that's she's a holding long a long hold. time. Yep. She's still got 39 seconds that I can see on the clock right now. Yeah, we saw her last shot. The, we saw the timing. It was a lot faster than that. So. Yeah, she's... Coming to full draw with 28 seconds, 27, 26, 25. She's got plenty of time. Just oh, left. Just Boy, left. she got the number correct, too. She wanted that. Mm. Probably going to be a five. So she'll still take third. Yep, she's on the podium. Could be an eight, but probably a five. It is five points. Yep, five. Emily, 463. Lindsay was fifth. Yeah. Aaron was fourth. Correct. Emily just got third because Kara and Kaylee need four points. They just, just need, need to hit, hit the, the target, target to finish ahead of her. Yep. Kaylee did have a miss this weekend, but that's the unlikely scenario yeah. here. Yeah. I wonder. The 14's bigger. You can see it right yeah. there on the screen. The 12's, you know, car typically shoots the lower. Yeah. The 14's bigger. It's got arrow holes to aim off of. If she hits it, she forces Kaylee to hit it. 
She's pretty comfortable shooting that lower. I bet she's gauging. I Can I see uh, enough? I'd shoot that 14. I think you, if you hit the animal, you're guaranteed second. 14 ring is bigger. I think you go for it right here. Go for it. She's done it before. Twelve. Oh, she's center got punch it. to twelve. All right. <laughs> well, <laughs> she's good. I just so have she to laugh. forces. Yep. Kaylee. She, she's a four seventy two. Has to hit a bonus ring or the fourteen. She has to hit a twelve. Twelve. A twelve, and she will win on bonus ring right. count. Yep. Since Kaylee had the miss and was leading, she obviously had way more bonus rings to get to her four oh eight starting score. So now she has to have a bonus ring to win this tournament. Yeah. Now here, Kaylee might go with the 14. It's bigger, you know, better chance of hitting it. It's yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah, either. If she shoots an eight or a five, yeah, it doesn't she's, matter. She's, yeah, she's going to go to second, but she has to have a ring. So, you know, do you shoot the bigger ring or do you shoot where you're comfortable aiming? She called up her. Let's see what happens. Ten. Ten. So Carr is going to end up winning Carr this. Carr is going to take that. Four. Hey. Seventy. Second place. Your yeah. first tournament back. She overcame a lot of hurdles this weekend, too. If she Absolutely. missed the target and came in here and shot as good as she did, <laughs> I can do nothing but applaud Kaylee for her performance this weekend. Absolutely. We see Cara super happy. Super happy with the win, Darren, but I'm going to say super happy for the double dip. Oh, I know. She's just <laughs> – Car and I always talk. I, we shoot the same courses, and we talk about man card. She's like, did I get your man card this weekend? Because <laughs> since we shoot the same courses, she can beat me. Yeah. And a lot of times she does. So <laughs> I, have to, I have to swallow my pride and let her take my man card. Yeah. <laughs> So here she comes in there. Cara Kelly, we want to know, are you happier about winning the tournament or the double dip? Oh, my gosh. I am on cloud nine. <laughs> did that just happen? Did that just happen? <laughs> it did. Oh, my gosh. Oh, I'm sure my husband's jumping for joy right now, the whole family. So, um, wow, that was incredible. And um, I don't even know how to summarize. I've been blessed to win both a few times in my career, but... I don't know. There's something special about shooting four twelves out there that makes it feel a little, little, really good. <laughs> I, I was going to say we were talking earlier that you know when you guys started off and you, I think three of you twelve the first target. And I said now they know my numbers are good. Yeah. And then you just pounded that shoot off right there. I mean you you forced everybody's hand. You know Kaylee had to hit a bonus ring right there, but you I, I talk about it all the time. You're so steady. You're so solid. You're so consistent. And I talk about you stealing my man card, too. I talked about that a minute ago. But it's I, I love watching good archery, and you're just a joy to watch. Thank I just you so congratulations. You're awesome thank out you there. Thank you so much. And major kudos to Kaylee. She shot her butt off she today. Did. Um, incredible round. Everybody, all the girls. I mean, to come in here with just two points apart, all of us, hats off to all of them. It's a joy and an honor to shoot against them. You're an awesome archer. Congratulations, Cara <laughs> Kelly. So Cara Kelly, 2023 you. ASA Classic Champ and Shooter of the Year in Women's Pro. Congratulations. <laughs> Folks, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with our final division of the evening, Open Pro at the ASA Classic. Don't go anywhere. Jeffries, Mr. Ryan Reed, Chris Hacker, Alan Connor, Benny Barger, and your number one qualifier from Voorheesville, New York, Jacob Sluzard. I thought I could hang with these guys and I wanted to prove that, but winning after five tournaments is it's a lot. Number 
one qualifier in the women's shoot down. Sharon Wallace. Your first place qualifier. Jeff Rainey. Your number one qualifier, Miss Cara Kelly. Mr. Levi Morgan. That's Mr. McCarthy. world's most advanced and accurate archery experience. We challenge you to go to your local retailer and ask for Elite to demo the Omnia today. CBE, that's custom bow equipment. I'm talking about field tested, yeah. fully proven. Wow, what a match. Premium archery accessories. Check out the full line at custombowequipment.com. I've, I'm shooting my bow great. I had one really bad mistake. Um, still not sure exactly what happened. I overjudged it a couple, but like wonder foam, the Wolverine in the back, shot a five. So Danny did not miss much that first half. So he had to substantially widen the gap. All right, welcome back everyone to the ASA Classic here in Coleman, Alabama, our final division of the evening. We bring out the big guns, open pro, Darren Christianberry run it down for us. Dan McCarthy did finish off shooter of the year and he's leading this event with a 430. Levi Morgan, 427. Andy Callaway is back in the mix at a 426. Jacob Sluzars has been coming on strong for the last couple of years, 424. And Justin Martin, I'll make a quick note, I saw he's at a 424 with 12 bonus rings. That means he didn't have a single blemish on his scorecard this weekend. No eights, a clean round. That's very impressive. So six points top to bottom. This should be a Fantastic shoot-off. Can't wait to get to it, Darren. But first up, we're going to go back to Metropolis for the Matthews Pro-Am and see how things shook out there. In Open Pro, Joseph Goza was tied for the lead after day one and alone in the lead after day two but only six points separated first from fifth in the division as the shoot down started. From Honiger, Alabama, Henniger, Alabama. Shoots for Darton, Joseph Goza. And Goza has seen leads evaporate in the pass. 
He's in his 14th year shooting Open Pro, but had just two wins under his belt over that period, the last of which came in Metropolis in 2017. He's got a pile of seconds and thirds, though, and it was clear he didn't want to add to that total. Got that 12. Goes the shot a flawless round in the finals, going 10, 12, 12, 10, 10, 10, to take his first win in six years. He's our champion. Awesome. I, I don't know. I, I was going to be a little braver and shoot a couple 14s, but when I got to the, to the Leopard, I didn't really need it. I didn't feel like so I... I tried to 12, but I hit a 10, so I don't know. I shot good all weekend. The bow was holding great. Seeing good numbers, and it's just, just all came together this weekend. I never shot an eight. All right, Darren, we're going to kick things off with the third member of our team, Nathan Brooks, who is going to bring out our Open Pro Archers. All right, for our final event, of this evening's activities, the Open Pro Division. Your fifth place qualifier from Kilbuck, Ohio. Shooting for Martin, Justin Martin. Your fourth place qualifier from Voorheesville, New York. Shooting for Darton, Jacob Sluzar. And in third place, from Lancaster, South Carolina, shooting for Matthews, Andy Calloway. And in second place, from Uniontown, Pennsylvania, shooting for Matthews, Levi Morgan. And in first place, from Wazika, Wisconsin, shooting for Matthews, Dan McCarthy. All right, Darren, there he is, Open Pro Shooter of the, right, shooter of the Year, his third in a row. The guy who won the one before that, Levi Morgan. Yep, Levi had a streak of about 12 or 13 in a row, and Dan started a nice little streak of his own. I asked him about that. Hey, you know, you had all those. Levi's streak was 12 years, and Dan finished second many times. And I asked him, like, okay, all that time, and now you've got a little streak of your own. Well, you know, Dan, he, he's a... Uh, very cerebral guy, he said. I don't think about streaks. You know, you just go one year at a time. But he appreciates the consistency yeah. that Levi had over those 12 years. Oh, yeah, it's a ridiculous streak that may never be topped or never rivaled again. I don't know. Um, but, man, oh, man, what what those two right there have done for the unknown game, whew, pretty Crazy. impressive. Yep. There's a good look at Justin Martin. I talked about yep. him earlier, 424 with 12 12s, not a blemish on his card. Let's see if he can continue that streak here. He's yeah, is, pretty good. He is shooting at the Coyote there. Ten. Just left. That's not bad. That's a long target. Mm -hmm. We don't still we don't have the numbers since this is a judging class, but right. I know that Coyote's a pretty good poke. Okay, first up, Dan McCarthy. All right, first up, Dan. I believe I see a center ten there. Yep. Ten for him. Ten for Dan. Four forty. Levi I mean, called up her, and it looks like it landed in a pretty good spot. Man, Levi Morgan, three points behind you. <laughs> I know Dan says he's pretty steady out there, but that's got to make you nervous. Four thirty-nine. He's now closed that lead to just one point. One point. They're both shooting a brand new bow. Yes, they are. From Matthews. They From got Matthews. a new target bow. They do. Both of them said it's the steadiest target bow that they've ever shot. Nice. Both of them. They don't need any extra help. I, <laughs> I think you can give them a bent <laughs> two by four and they'd hold it steady. Yeah. <laughs> I missed what Andy shot there. I was babbling about their bow. 
looking yeah, hard. Yeah, we'll get it here when they yeah they all come the around. Score. Yeah, they're looking at Jacob's arrow hard here. Andy, this is his first shoot down he made this year. Same for Justin Martin. Mm. They broke the ice at the Classic. Broke That's a good place ice. to do it. Ten, Ten for, for Jacob. Jacob. Ten for Jacob. Four thirty-four. And for Justin Martin. Justin. I believe Justin shot a ten as well. Yes, he did. Just left on the Coyote. Four thirty-four. Ten for Justin. We have we have two Justin Martins in the Open Pro class, and so we always identify them by where they're from. We have Justin Martin from Ohio, <laughs> who is out here now, and we have Justin Martin from Alabama. Yes. Was another one of our open pro archers. We'll see an update here in your right. Andy score. I'm yep. going to assume, yeah, 10. He's at a 436 now. Okay. So Levi shot Levi. the 12 and yep. inched a little closer to Dan. Now Levi's going to the shortest target, I believe, on the field, which is he the hyena. Is the hyena. So do you go for the kill, big guy? Oh boy. Now. How confident is he in these numbers? Let's oh, see. Oh, right here we go. This is what yeah. I want to see. Try view. Justin Martin on the left, Dan McCarthy in the middle, Levi Morgan on the right. Let's see if Levi goes for the kill shot here on that 14. Nope. Went at Took the lower. 12. Yep. And he got it. Dan. If Dan shoots a 10 here, he may. Oh, did he call upper? He did not call upper. So he's seeing these targets a little hot. He yeah. shot a little high on the right, links, a little high on the deer. All right, Justin Martin first here with a 10. 444. Since Levi's 12 the first two targets, yeah. Dan, Dan might be forced to shoot at a 14 to keep up yeah. here. 10 for Dan. 450. 450. I know Matthews would like to see one of them win with that new bow. Oh, I guarantee Good it. debut for him. Gotta be. Oh, got it. Gotta be. Got it. Yep. Smashed it. Wow. That's why you don't want Levi three points behind you in a shoot off because he can catch it pretty quick. So, and Mike Tyrell also said he has a two bonus ring lead as well over Dan if oh, they were yeah, to tie. Right. But at 450 and 451, one of them would have to see a five for the tie. That's probably not going to happen. 444. I missed Andy again. I missed him. I missed him. I know. Andy. Sorry, Andy. I'm, <laughs> I'm sitting here looking, talking about these different scenarios, and I missed you twice. I'm sorry, buddy. And Andrew, Jacob, and Justin are all tied at 444. So Andy shot an eight, I believe, yep, on that he one. Did. Yeah, 444. So we have three guys at 444, yep. six Jacob points behind Dan, and then Levi just snuck into the lead. Getting ready to shoot our third target of the shoot down here. Which is the, oh, Levi's on the fourth, so he's on. He's on the odd The odd dad, yeah, yeah. Dan's, Dan's on, the on the closest. Yeah, mm. he'll be. That 14's got to be staring at him. Andy moved over to the Coyote, I believe. Here goes Levi. Fix that peep sight with his nose. Look at his thumb there. Just clear. That means he's going 12. It. Are you kidding? That means he's going 12. It. 12, 12, 12. Andy, good strong Andy shot. Got a 10. Mm -hmm. Dan has not shot yet. Looks like there's a 12 on this. Maybe he was waiting to see. Uh, yeah. If, if Levi 12s it, I Maybe. need this 14. I bet that's what he did. Because it's the closest. You can't. Yeah. It, if, if he's going to get it, this I'm has to be the one. I bet he waited to see what Levi did there, and now he's like, okay, I need to 14 this to keep up. No, oh, 12. 12. Interesting. Good shot, Dan mm. McCarthy. Yeah. All righty. Let's start with target number one for Jacob. So this is Jacob here. Smoked. That's pinwheel, 12 for pinwheel yes. No doubt there. 456. How about Justin Martin? 
All right, here comes Justin Martin, and he shoots an eight. First eight of the weekend for Justin. 4.52. Pretty good streak to hit 42 targets without a blemish on your scorecard. Yep. For sure. Because the one point difference can't possibly tie for score at this yep. point. As Mike Tyrell noticed, 12 for Dan McCarthy. Four, six, Levi and Dan two. cannot tie for score. So bonus rings are irrelevant. His own opinion about that. Another 12. <laughs> Man. Four, six, These guys just battle. Three. With only two targets left in the main round. Yeah, that's right. That was a two. They both 12 it. Andy got a 10. Andy got a 10. Four, five, four. So Jacob's now sitting in third. Yep. At 456. Six. So he is six points behind Dan. Yep. Seven points behind Levi. Yeah, currently everybody's in for our, sh you know, we've got two hours to go, but everybody's within 10 points. Justin would be Dan. the only one that's not. He's 11 points behind Levi. Oh, Levi, right, right, right. Yep. Levi's got 63. 63. Yep. Yes, yes, correct. I was looking at Dan. So we've shot three. We got two more arrows in regulation. So Dan now moves to the Audad and Levi on the Coyote, and they're very close in distance. But of course, that Audad's got those big juicy rings compared to that Coyote. That was Jacob. That was Jacob. He's holding that bow pretty steady. Levi just, that's not Levi. Justin, strong shot. He didn't uh, like he it. He didn't like it, An no. Eight. I don't know what Levi shot on that Coyote, but here's Dan on the Audad. Man, he's got to shoot it. Sooner or later. I think he shoots at another 12 here. 10. Hmm. I can't see what Levi did. Yeah, did. I don't know what he hit. Andrew Calloway. His expression hasn't changed a lot. So let's see what Andy got yep. right here. Call upper. Like he got it. 12 oh points. Yeah. Shot Andy there we Calloway. Go. All right. 466. <laughs> yes, sir. He needed that. He's got a good cheering section. Yes, in the he crowd. does. I'm sure his wife Janet's up there. She's always here. 10 for Jacob. So he's at 466. All right. So that'll get Andy in a Race tie for, for third, third as yeah. well. 8 for Justin Martin. 460. 8 for Justin. All right. Now, we go over to Dan, who shot a 10. This is a heavyweight fight right here, folks. <laughs> Mike Tyrell just yeah. called it a heavyweight fight. Four, seven, two. And then Levi Morgan coming off a of three I don't straight know. It looks like he's tall for a 10, I believe. What do we got here? 10. 10, a ten. Points. Okay. 473. All right. So the movement was All right, gentlemen. at the for the third place position. Now we've got Andy and Jacob tied for third, 466. Dan 472, Levi 473. Dan goes to the Coyote. Levi goes to the Lynx. Lynx is a little bit closer. It's lit up. I mean, yeah. Levi's got excellent eyesight. I bet he can see every ring on that thing. Yeah. I think he'll just 12 it. I don't think he'll put the turn because if he if he shot at the 14 and shot an eight or a five, he's like like almost given the tournament to Dan. Yep. Exactly. So I think he has to try to 12 this because Dan's on probably the hardest target out there. Not that he can't 12 it. He's yeah. liable to 12 it. It's the smallest. Mm -hmm. ten. Oh, center ten. Levi looks like Damn. he twelved it. I heard some cheering, so I bet. Yeah, oh, he did get it. Got it. So he's going to increase the lead Got some more. Got another one. All right, first up, our leader Levi Morgan. He means business, Darren. Four. 
of five bonus rings. Unknown distance. Four eighty-five. Andrew Callaway. Four of five. Currently at four sixty-six. Huh? This fan club is hoping he's done it again. Wow, that's impressive. Ten for Andy. What? Four seventy-six for Andy. The Proctor. Hey Scott. Here's Jacob. Jacob. Ten, ten points for oh, Jacob. Four seventy six. So, no. Where'd the bonus ring shake out? I think Andy will break that tie on bonus rings. They should go to the sixth. Yeah, they will, because they're only yep. nine points behind Levi. Mm -hmm. Justin did what he could. They're oh, looking at his arrow hard it. there. Oh, he went for that 14. Don't go on, that's close. Oh, man. All right. That's a tough one. Probably just why. I'm glad I'm not calling yep. it. Yeah, Eight. it looked like it was just. 460. Out. Hey, good run at it, though. Now, Scared it to death. He came in one point behind Levi, who yeah. just took another 12. Let's see what he's done for himself. He came round. in one, uh, three points ahead of Levi, one point. Yeah. On ten, this ten hand. for Dan, four yeah. eighty-two. So, going in the final so Levi's wow. at eighty-five, Dan's 85. at eighty-two. Jacob at four seventy-six. So both seventy-sixes will shoot off. Justin Martin's going to finish in fifth. Looks like Sluzars will shoot first. Then Andy Callaway. Then Dan McCarthy. Then Levi Morgan to see who's going to win this thing. How about that? So so Levi lost shooter of the year by three points now has a three-point lead <laughs> heading in to take the classic win. He figures, ah, we'll split the weekend. <laughs> we'll let McCarthy yeah. have shoot of the year, but I'm going to take the class <laughs> away from him. <laughs> <me. laughs> I mean, if you hit four out of five that's, out there, I mean, that's 80%. That I mean, what what more? <sighs> how do you beat Crazy. that? You have to Crazy. match it to even have a chance. Yeah. Dan didn't shoot bad at all. Levi no. just like, hey, I'm going I'm to come in here and take this thing. Yeah. That's... All right, here's the deal, folks. We have just learned that we will be able to use the general admission field for parking tomorrow, so no one has to take the bus. <laughs> we, we had and folks being busted in, Darren Christianberry, for the amateurs, uh, because the fields here are just so wet yes. from the rain we had. And Mike Tyrell just announced they will be allowed to park on site tomorrow. Because we should mention, you know, the pros are finished today, but for the amateurs, the tournament goes through Sunday. Yeah. Classes out here for all ages. Up, we got shooters out here who are 90. We've got kids out here who are six. Yeah. All equipment, different levels, traditional, Olympic recurve, crossbow, you name it, ASA has a place for you. It's an archery event, and all ages, all sizes, all equipment, they can accommodate. You get yeah, anything out there. It's... It's pretty incredible to see in a weekend. You know, we spend so much time with the pros, uh, but I mean, I believe we had somewhere in the vicinity of about 15, 1,600 archers signed up for the weekend. Some of them went home early because of the rain delay, um, but you're talking about over a thousand archers here. Yeah, it's awesome. This tournament's uh, the coverage, the the talent, the just the accessibility of everybody the team shoots on thursday yeah. um it's it's a great venue great for spectators if you want to watch um great place if you want to make a career out of archery you can work your way up into the pro ranks yeah. and you can win thousands exactly. and thousands of dollars it's not for everybody but man if you have the desire and the the, the determination to do it there's an opportunity right here for anyone for sure and this is one of those crazy sports where hey you see levi morgan dan mccarthy walking down the street they're you know right on the same facility as you are you yeah. walk right over to him levi can i take a picture with you sure yeah he's pretty popular with the with the masses um because people just want to know what makes that guy tick and the same way with mccarthy same way with a lot of the guys yeah. what makes him tick what makes you so special um, that you can come out here unknown distance and hit four of five bonus rings <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah that's pretty crazy that's 
And he's not done yet. They get one more opportunity. Got another one. Shooting at the deer. Now this deer, the 14 ring is not the same size as the 14 on the Audad. It's, it's right. If it's a, if it's the same size as the 12, I'd be shocked. It it's might a, even be a touch smaller. I think it is. I think it is. You can see the arrow holes there. It's it's marked up pretty good. Jacob will be able to see that, but where he's at being tied for third, I don't know if he has to shoot a 14 because he can't catch Dan or Levi. So 12 ring might be his play here. Twelve ring was the play. Oh, I, boy, that's close. It yeah. looks good. I think he's got it. Yeah. Yeah. There's a fist. Oh yeah. There yeah. you go. So that's now a better he, look. he has forced Andy to shoot a bonus ring. Andy has to shoot it. Because if he hits it, we go. Andy will get third based off of his bonus ring amount. Yep. Four eighty-eight. All right. Yep. Andy's got to have a 12 here. 12 or 14. Calling the upper. Yep. Big arrow right here. Couple, this is. A couple thousand dollar difference probably between third and fourth. For sure. Is. One and only shoot down appearance this year. I'm mm -hmm. sure he'd like it to be on a podium. Yep. Yeah, and Jacob shot a good, he shot a good, I mean, we talked about Levi and Dan a lot because of the race they were doing out there, but these guys both shot good shoot downs. Yes, they did. Here we go. Needs a 12. Called upper. Oh, God, just, just left. That I, is so cool. It may be in there. I can see a little indentation in the line, yeah. but he didn't That's seem like it's in. He didn't act like he liked it. No. They're going to look at it, though. They are looking close. Ooh, I can't oh, see because the shadow. shadow. Yeah. Oh, man, oh, I man. don't. Oh, yeah. Oh, that angle yeah, is different. That, angle, that looks pretty good. Man. So with I that one, I don't know where the line is. Is that's that the, the thing. line down in that valley, or is it? What's he got? There it is. Oh, oh. got it. Andy Calloway. So that's part of what we we're talking about, Darren. Like you were saying, where's the line? Yeah. It's hard to tell. Hard to tell. He must have made a 12 and done something good. <laughs> so he got wow. it. Yeah, that's. I, I mean. So that's going to take Jacob down to third place now. So uh, very good shot there by Andy. Yeah, to grab for that. sure. So now McCarthy got it. three points behind. If he shoots at 14, it'll put him at 96. Levi would have to hit a 12 to win. And if Dan shoots an eight, he's at 90. He still stays at least in second. If he shoots a five, he would be one point behind. Andy, so this is a big yeah, arrow right yeah. here. Andy, we should say, can do no worse than third. He needs a 14 to force Levi to shoot a 12. Oh, man. No worse than an eight to take second. Got it. Smoked Got it. it. Wow. Four, I mean, right nine, on six. that. There was one arrow hole in there, Darren, and he <laughs> smashed Inside it. Inside out. <laughs> That means he judged it perfect to make executed a perfect shot. I got a clap for that, bro. Crazy. McCarthy. So Levi needs a 12. Right. He's hit four out of five, and now he has to hit one to win the tournament. Yeah. Upper 12. Must be something there he can see. Deep breath. I'm a little nervous. Oh, I am definitely I like nervous. It. Boy, it's a good shot by Dan. Levi's got a head of ring right here. Talk about putting the pressure on. He's going four for five. Called upper 12, correct? He did call upper. Let's see where it lands. Oh, man. Oh. He shot a mile high. Darn it. What? Look at that upper 12, folks. Yeah. <laughs> he says, dang it. 
So an eight will put him at 93. Wow. And Dan McCarthy, double dips. That was a great shoot down, Mike Tyrell just said. To come down to the last arrow like that, yep. to and figure it out. For Dan to put that 14 in there, I mean, the whole God. tournament flips on Levi's shoulders right there where I got to hit a ring now. Yeah. They're looking at numbers yep. to see what they had there, so. Yeah, they're wow. comparing. Yep, here's Dan's winning shot here on this 14. Boom. I mean, that's just, just smokes it. There's one arrow hole in it, and he center punched the arrow hole. Levi which shook. Which is what he does. Levi shook his hands, a good shot, but deep down he's like, dang you, McCarthy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's you a know. famous video of uh, Levi's son saying something about that. He said, Dan won again, and his kid just <laughs> like, darn it, Dan. <laughs> uh, he's tough. But hey. Dan McCarthy, he did what he had to do. He's coming over to the headset here. Just an incredible weekend for him to lock up Shooter of the Year. I see his shadow there, and there he is, Dan McCarthy, 14 when you needed it most. Tell us about that last arrow. Man, that's just pure luck. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I felt like I executed great shots on all of those. Um, I just, I really wasn't seeing the numbers right. Um, Levi was banging on him. His numbers were different than mine. His, his, he really probably had those right. And I was trying to make the adjustments out there and see him for less. I Truthfully, I shot that last target for probably two yards less than it looked uh, because I was just over judging him. And uh, I don't know. So yeah, I, I don't feel like I earned that one. I shot really well, but I, I feel like Levi shot really good out there. I just hit the last one there when, uh, you know, aiming at the 14 ring. And we play this game a lot, and that's the way it shakes out. But uh, that's how I feel about it, truthfully. Yeah, Dan, you shot a solid round all weekend, you know, hung on to shooter of the year. And then watching Levi hit four out of five, it was like, you know, Dan has to 14 this to force his hand. And when you did, it's like, holy crap, the whole tournament just flipped, flipped. The, the whole roll flipped right there. So forcing him to have to hit that, you know, that was a huge arrow on that 14. And we've talked about the double dip. Congrats on Shooter of the Year. Congrats on a classic win, man. You're shooting fantastic. I appreciate it. It's a, it's a tough event when you're trying to manage both of those. And, you know, Levi put pressure on me all weekend. It was actually with we came into this event one point for Shooter of the Year. Um, I was able to get a pretty good lead. And every time I had a lead, the guy just chipped away at it and banged away just like we've seen right here where – he would knock a you know a ten point lead down to nothing really quick and um, I don't know just ended up shaking out with me on top but you give us one or two more targets in that situation and I feel like it could have been him standing right here so I'm very thankful to be here but at the same time hats off to how he shot this week and he he, he absolutely crushed it yeah. and that goes for the other guys too they congrats really well. to you though Dan McCarthy you are our 2023 open pro ASA classic champ and shooter of the year I appreciate you guys thank you All right, folks, before we sign off, we're showing you here. This is our 2024 schedule for ASA, the McKenzie Tour for 2024. You can see there Foley, Alabama. We're uh, in February. The new one, that's the one we want to talk about, is fourth down Clarksville, Tennessee. No more London, Kentucky. We're going to go to Clarksville, Tennessee there uh, for July 30th. And, of course, finish up back here at the McKenzie Classic in Coleman, Alabama, August 1 to 4. But there's your schedule for 2024. Thanks to everybody who tuned in for 2023. For Nathan Brooks, Darren Christianberry, I'm PJ Riley from Competition Archery Media. Great season. Thanks to everyone. We'll see you next year. We'll see you February 25th in Foley, Alabama.